Okay, I think we're live. I'm kind of like using a, um, I got to use my phone to transmit this, so I don't know if there's going to be problems, but whatevs. We are live, people. What's up, everyone out there? Shout out to all the people who are out there right now. As you're coming in, please smash the thumbs up. Let us know if you're receiving this properly. Hopefully, we are. Hopefully, everything's going well. I have no idea. Uh, let me drop the open on, on everyone. Oh, I gotta use my phone to transmit it, so I don't know if this is gonna be. Fun. Okay, there we Welcome go. Back I'm hearing a little bit of echo. All right, make sure you subscribe, guys. Thumbs up, ring the bell so you can be notified. We are live. Come on, let's see jazz hands. John, you gotta do jazz hands. There we go. John's doing jazz hands. There you go. Trey's doing jazz hands. All right, we are live. This is episode uh, four twenty three of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. Uh, our special guest tonight is John Crump of the GOA VA, Virginia, and Amoland. He's a writer with Amoland. Plus, we've got Trey from Aries. He's joining us here tonight. What's up, Trey? What's up, Hank? What's going on? Uh, what's up, John? Welcome to the show, man. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, you picked uh, you picked a, a good night to come on the show. <laughs> 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 so you know, as luck have it yeah yeah as luck would have it that's how it goes so anyway you're here i'm here everyone's here uh what's going on with you man this is i think this is the first time we're meeting so we just literally met like five minutes ago yeah yeah we met about five minutes ago uh yeah. basically just trying to get virginia organized for gun owners of america right. i am New state director. Um, I've known those guys for a long time through my writing with Ammo Land. Mm -hmm. We usually eat lunch with them about once a month, and the opportunity came up. They said, we need a state director. Would you be interested in it? And I said, hell yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Ready? And he said, more 2A, the better. So go ahead, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's cool, man. Um, I know they don't have GOA in every state. Do you have any idea how they figure out what states? We've asked them this. Uh, we had Jordan on last week. Well, I think I think the way they do it is they see what the interest is, and if there's someone out there that's really working with the GOA constantly and helping push the mecha, the the message of the of two A and of a no nonsense, no compromise type individual that's motivated to do this stuff and have the time because it does mm -hmm. take a lot of time, mm -hmm. then you would be considered for a state director's role. Okay. All right. Cool. Do you get to fly around in any kind of private jets? You get any kind of expensive suits? Anything no, like I'm still waiting for my one million dollar a year contract. But right now, they don't hold your they're breath. Me, yeah, they're telling me it's a volunteer position. But yes, they, they'll pay me one million dollars. Do episodes on GOA TV. Oh, GOA TV. Nice. I'm watching that right now. Yeah. I'm that, no, we are we are 50 million years away from GOA t uh, TV. So, well, I don't know. Who knows, man? Who knows? They could do anything over there. Um, and, by the way, Andrew gave us two bucks on the super chat. Thanks to Andrew. Uh, let me see. So, Trey, what's up with you, man? What's going on? Just working on the range, man. Just staying busy. Okay. The range's been killing me. The range. Uh, the range is the range officially open yet? No, but here shortly it will be. Okay, here shortly. All right, cool. Have, have, have the last, last little bit taken care of. Okay, have you ever met uh, John Crump? I have not. This is the first time I've met him. Oh, okay. John, meet Trey. Trey, meet John. Nice, nice to meet you, John. You. Yeah. Nice to meet you, yeah. too, man. Yeah. Um, shout, out, shout out to Ashley from Gunstreamer. Um, John, you ever heard of uh, Ashley? Well, I don't know if you ever heard of Ashley, but you ever heard of Gunstreamer in your travels? <laughs> Absolutely. I wrote an article about it. Uh, I was actually talking to the founder of GunStreamer a little while ago, and I wrote an article about YouTube alternatives, which is GunStreamer and Full 30. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like GunStreamer, especially the fact that you can automatically move all your videos over. Right, right. Do you guys do you guys at Amazon have a bunch of videos? Uh, no, we're mostly writing, uh, okay. mostly articles. We really are hyper focused on that trying to get the written content out there mm -hmm. every once in a while a video will get thrown up but that's not the main focus of ammo land yeah okay uh i think it is good to do video so so you don't have do you guys have a youtube channel uh i have a youtube channel it's okay, really, really small and okay. it, it was demonetized too it was demonetized yeah uh basically all i do is live streams about the second amendment and they oh you poor bastard 
I don't think of that. <laughs> no reviews of guns or anything. This Second Amendment knew, and they went ahead and demonetized the whole what, channel. What's uh, the YouTube channel? Yeah, I don't know if you want uh, the folks yeah, out here yeah. to follow. A Black Swan Tactical Prep. Anyone can follow me. Um, okay, Black Swan. We'll follow you if you follow us, John. Oh, I don't know. Of course. We'll do, we'll do like a follow for follow thing. I don't, you know. Isn't that bad? Don't yeah, I think that's a crime. I think that's a crime. Okay. Supposedly. It. <laughs> it's supposed to be a crime. <laughs> We're <Watch> criminals! <laughs> we are criminals, despots! <laughs> I also heard that you said gay. Yes, uh, yeah, apparently I am gay. I am gay. I did come out of the closet. I don't know if anyone wants to talk about this already, but I did come out of the closet. We already knew, Hank. You know, <laughs> you, you gave it away. Yeah, well, yeah, that, you know, I mean, there's lots of giveaways. What can I say? There's lots of things out there that give it away. I'm sorry. What was your what was your YouTube channel? I'm looking it up myself. Uh, Black Swan Tactical Prep. It's uh, Black Swan Media. Media is the actual name, but. Okay. I like the name. I like the the um, tactical prep. Yeah, that, I mean that was from a long time ago. We just used it. I started a, a small little company called Black Swan uh, Media Group, which okay. consists of like LibertyReport.co and a bunch of other podcasts and websites oh, that I cool. sponsor. All right, I'm, I, I subscribe to you here. Let me throw it up for anyone out there that wants to. Uh, I'll okay. throw it up here on the screen if you guys want to see it. Black Swan Media. Please go uh, and, and follow John here and show show some support. I yeah, appreciate it. it right. Yeah, I'm sure he appreciates it. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, we got we all got to try to work with each other as much as we can. I mean, everybody's not going to be able to work with everybody. All that ad revenue. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So before we get in deep into this, I was telling you guys behind the scenes. Obviously, I guess. Um, you know, Never Enough Ammo came out uh, with a hit piece on me to take me down. So I'm a pretty big guy, but, you know, I guess he has what it takes to take me down. So that video, I have a response video to that, just in case anyone knows. I saw that video last night, um, and when I came in here, I started working on a response to that. That, I think, is getting uploaded right now, right, Lola? Yeah, so that's getting uploaded. It'll be up. I'll let you guys know. I, you know, I, I don't mind talking about it. Uh, Trey and John are here. John's kind of new. He's coming in. We're knee deep in drama. You said people were asking you about this before you came on the show with me, right? Yeah, just some random Twitter people. Uh, uh, were these what, people what, from what, America? We they they could have been jihadis, terrorists, or something like that. Uh, you, not you, not today, know? ISIS. Oh. But, <laughs> no, we don't just, care. I don't care. It's n there's nothing wrong with them knowing that they would get shredded. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just like yeah. random YouTube people saying, okay. uh, not YouTube people, uh, Twitter people that I've been pinged with over the last few days. Yeah, all of a sudden saying, "Hey, you need to." I do a lot of investigative yeah. journalism. Okay. Uh, and they were like, you need to investigate Hank Strange. Oh, my God. This. And I'm like, well, um, I'm actually going on a show. So. <laughs> I would love if you investigate me, by the way. Do you, are you saying I could be on Ammo Land? Uh, you could be on Ammo Land, man. Oh, please, investigate me. Cool. Yeah, investigate <laughs> me. Um, can we do one of can we reenact that thing with the dude who had the high point and he had the the mask on and everything but he thought it was a Glock 40? <laughs> Just problem solver. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do. No, actually that would be cool if you investigated me actually. I'm up for that. But <laughs> I, I I can definitely do it, man. Yeah, I want to be notorious. <laughs> That's my favorite rapper, Notorious B.I.G. Um, yeah, so I know Dez uh, Seventh Ave is, is saying, okay, are we back to this again? Yeah, obviously these guys aren't done uh, with attacking me or whatever. This is going to go on for a long time. They're set on, uh, they're set on destroying Hank Strange. Um, I did, by the way, get the check for like half the money that I'm owed. That came in, but but you know the check said final payment, so I guess that's all I'm getting. I got that check. I put it in the bank. I'll find out whether or not it bounces. But if it clears, guess what? I'm sending money to the GOA. I'm gonna I'm gonna split it. So I'm gonna send close to two hundred bucks because it's like three eighty three. So whatever you know, half of that is. I'm gonna send half of that to the GOA. The other half I'm gonna send it to Maj Ture that's running for a Philly seat. I don't know if you ever heard of Maj. Me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, John. I I'm really good friends with Maj. Oh, oh okay. I ate lunch with him about a week ago. <laughs> uh, he knows how notorious I am, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Maj and I are cool. I met him through my friend uh, Devin Perkins. He hosts okay. the Transform Chronicles. 
which I sponsor. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and I met him. Devin did a lot of work with uh, Black Guns Matter. So mm-hmm. I met him through, I met Maj through Devin, and I did an interview with him for Amalan. We just hit, really hit it off. Then he invited me to a couple of his uh, solutionary roundtables. Mm-hmm. Uh, that were was really good. Um, yeah, I've done Maj, one in Atlanta, I think. Yeah, Maj is actually doing a lot of stuff with the GOA right now as well. He is. He is. He's a good dude. He's. I, I like Maj. Obviously, like everyone has their whatever's that come along with them, but I find Maj to be like a good straight up, you could talk to him about anything, he'll answer, face, deal with whatever, doesn't back down. I like him. He's kind of like my spiritual guru. Yeah, you, you never have to wonder what you're going to get with him. Um, he's straight to the point, mm-hmm. and he's going to tell you what he thinks. Yeah, absolutely. Let me say this, because Archangel is going to be mad at me if I don't say this, so I, I have it up right now. He's telling me that John Crump writes some good stuff. That's why he reads Ammo Land. Kaboom! There you go. <laughs> uh, the Archangel's always got my back. Been like that way for a long time. Uh, Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms wants to know about the Ackerman McQueen. Do you do you have a place you want to start talking? I mean, obviously, we're talking about this craziness, but... If, if, if you want to talk about the Ackerman McQueen, we can, man. Um, yeah. In, in fact, Angus McQueen just passed away uh, last week of cancer. He was the CEO. He was the guy who actually was the architect of RITV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, how did I miss that in the news? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But if, yeah. you would, if you would read my articles, you would know. Uh, yes. You know what? You need to put me on the... <laughs> Why are you laughing, Trey? Because <laughs> he called you out. It's funny. <laughs> Check it, yeah. yeah, he died of cancer. Um, oh, okay. His, uh, that's, son's that's too bad. Over. Yeah, that's um, yeah. He was like basically the architect of NRA. Uh, the okay. Ackerman Queen deal is a mess. Uh, some of the interesting facts is the Ackerman Queen. They're being sued by the NRA. The NRA lawyer is Angus, or was I guess he's dead now. Angus McQueen's son-in-law. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's so he's actually married to the the current CEO's sister. And the former CEO's uh, father, I mean daughter, what, whatever. What, uh, okay, this sounds like something only Trey will be able to sort out for me, because I got a little lost. You says he's the the son, okay. but he's married to the. Okay, he's the son-in-law of Angus McQueen, okay. which was the CEO. Okay, son-in-law. The new CEO is Angus McQueen's uh, son, Revan. Oh, okay. He's, and he's married to Revan Sistel, sister. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it now. <laughs> okay. So, I got it. sued by their own family, <laughs> uh, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, family, right? What was that, Trey? They keep it in a family, right? Yeah. Apparently, they don't. Uh, they don't like each other. Um, hmm. which is kind of obvious. So, can but, you give us the? Cause so, so you probably know like how this all got set up, right? At that whole Ackerman McQueen NRA thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. This is basically what happened. Um, Ackerman McQueen was charging crazy amounts of money. Uh, $42 million in 2017 alone, which is 14% of the NRA's operating budget. How many million? $42 million. $42 million for one year? From one year, yeah. So uh, Ackerman McQueen was not giving NRA any type of analytical data of how many hits and how many views they were bringing into NRA TV. Mm-hmm. So the NRA requested that, which according to the contract that they can, where Ackerman McQueen either ignored their request or said, hey, we don't have the data analytics, which mm-hmm. if you anything about technology, right. so analytics, you can basically pull it all up from Google Analytics. Right, yeah, that's the thing. You can try, but I mean, all of this stuff is out there, so... That's that's why I'm always wondering why anyone's trying to hide. I'm not trying to hide anything. Everything's out there. People can pull it up whenever they want to. Yeah. yeah. So uh, NRA started pressuring them, and they broke the relationship. Also, okay. Ackerman McQueen. Uh, one of Ackerman McQueen's AM's employees was Oliver North. Right. Who was president of the NRA at the time. Mm-hmm. Then at NRAM, uh, Oliver North, at, at the alleged behest of am try to oust um mm-hmm. which kind of backfired and he actually got ousted um, yeah he was that for be- real did did um did oliver north actually and ackerman mcqueen actually try to get rid, rid of uh, wayne lapierre 
Okay, I, I have to say allegedly. Okay, alle- okay. Can't be one hundred percent sure. Right. But if I was betting money, I would bet every single penny I have, all my houses and my kids. Wow. That. Wow. Okay. That's what happened. Uh, so the NRA basically said to Oliver North, "You can either stop working for Ackerman. Sorry, you can stop working for AM and just be our president, or you can resign as president of the NRA." Mm-hmm. And he chose to resign. Then Chris Cox got caught up in it a little bit. Uh, he got suspended. Then he resigned. Mm-hmm. The Allegation is Chris Cox was part of the whole entire scheme to Alf Wayne LaPierre, mm-hmm. which might or might not be true. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence that he was involved, but there was no smoking gun as there was with like Oliver North. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I've got some questions from, I don't know if we want to go away from the NRA thing briefly i don't know how much people want, but des seventh ab says enough fluff hank what legislation has the goa lobbied for what cases are they currently involved in uh the trump bump, bump stock case is one mm-hmm. where they sued um for the bump stocks case there's also an amicus brief for the uh, new york state uh pistol association that is suing the city of new york for the transportation mm-hmm. basically if you owned a gun in New York City, they made a law that it's almost impossible for you to transport it outside the city. So mm-hmm. if you wanted to take it somewhere else in the state, you couldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to the Supreme Court. It should be heard in the fall, and the decision should be early next year. There's an amicus brief on that. Also, in Washington State, uh, someone filed a Freedom of Information Act to get the names and addresses of everyone that turned in bump stocks. And their plan was to release it to the general public on a map. So you can look up who turned into bump stocks so you can figure out who owns guns. Wow. Uh, the G- GOA filed a lawsuit uh, to stop that and so far has stopped it. There, there's an injunction against that information being released. So that's just a small little thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the also of the Kansas uh, suppressor um, case Mm -hmm. where in kansas the kansas have a law where if you make a suppressor in kansas you can transfer it without having to go through the whole nfa thing as long as it stays in kansas Mm -hmm. Uh, well the federal authorities atf came out because there was a veteran that made a youtube not a youtube a facebook video Mm -hmm. saying hey look i got the suppressor under Kansas law, I, I bought it legally without going through the NFA, and I don't have any intention of transferring it out of Kansas. As long as I do that, I'm covered. Well, he really wasn't covered. Um, so the GOA has filed suit on his behest. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we have heard about that guy. Um, is he? He's locked up currently, right? Or no, no, he's out okay. now. Okay. Okay. He, he in probation, one year probation. He could have got 15 years though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, him yeah. and the Dillon both got in trouble. Yeah. Um, let's see. Applebyte says, but the bump stock case alone is a hell of a lot more than anything the NRA has done as of late. Yeah, I mean, is the, is the NRA active fighting anything right now with everything going on that you know about? <laughs> uh, I don't really want to comment on too okay. much of what okay. they are doing. They are, they are doing some, some, good uh work um they're not as active as they were but they're going through a lot of hard times right now mm-hmm. but they are actively um and in, in the courts like the case that's going to the supreme court they're a part of that as well too the okay. okay so they are part of that so they are doing stuff um i don't want to bash the nra because you know we need to all stick together in this um the nra is still very very powerful Still mm-hmm. power, more powerful than any other gun organization. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, a GOA, and I really like this about them, they don't want to bash other organizations. Right. Yeah. I, I see that whenever they come on, that that's one of the big things. They want to just get in there and do the work. Trey, feel free to jump in here and ask any questions or anything like that. Uh, I'm, I'm just listening. I'm letting him uh, talk. Yeah. We're asking some very good questions for him. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to figure out why. Boom. Okay. 
trying to make sure it's just uh, me and Trey up in the little window here. Oh, there's a little baby. There's Sarah. There she goes. Hi, Sarah. What's up, girl? Where's DJ? Sarah. DJ's not hanging out tonight. DJ wants to say hi to Hank. Yeah. Um, future gun owners. What's yeah. that? They can be future gun owners of America. Yeah, all future gun owners of yeah. America. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, DJ owns a couple they of all, guns. He's got a couple they of like guns. They like to shoot with me, and we all shoot together, and we have fun. Of course, the little baby doesn't, but she gets to hang. She likes to hang out. Yeah. That's uh, all. Yeah. I see Terribly Tactical in the chat. Shout out to him. Lots of people coming in. By the way, everyone that's in here, smash the thumbs ups. If you don't like us, you can smash the thumbs down. It's all good. Doesn't matter. Hey, Hank, I'm gonna put you on the spot really quick. Sure. Are you gonna come to our event in Virginia? Okay. Is this part of the investigative journalism or no? This is just trying to get me to go to the event. (laughs) Just trying to get you to go. Okay. So, okay. So, first of all, um, tell people about the event. Let's start with that. Hey, what's up, DJ? Hey, DJ, if you go to gunathon.com in Virginia, we're going to have a oh, yeah. event with a bunch of YouTubers and a bunch of podcasters to raise money for the GOA. There's going to be Matt Torres is going to be there, by the way. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah, you can be speaking, actually. Oh, uh, Eric Pratt, executive director. Where is it at in Virginia? I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to be in northern Virginia, Manassas area, right about 30 minutes outside D.C., Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, I was in Nor- I lived in Norfolk for a while. That's why I was asking. Yeah, we're we're gonna have a bunch of sponsors. We're gonna be doing giveaways. We have uh, two guns to give away at least, uh, and some other giveaways as well. Uh, it's gonna be a great time, and we're on all their proceeds are gonna go towards the GOA. When is that? Uh, April twenty sixth of twenty twenty. We had to put it that far out there because we have a special. <laughs> special musical guest that might be coming that's a big name is it a and, rapper yes oh really yes uh, i'm not going to give you any more information <laughs> is it a can... is it a um does he have a mohawk no, no it's not me <laughs> uh what's the name of, is it uh the guy that does uh white iverson Maybe. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not big into rap. Say maybe every time he asks a question. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know if he does or not. Well, but a little bit more about machine gun shoot. So you have machine guns for rent, or I can bring my own machine gun. How? What? Tell uh, us a little more about it. We're, we're gonna have. Uh, we're gonna have 20 machine guns on site. Uh, we're still working out the logistics on how we're gonna let people shoot them or not. Um, mm-hmm. It's a liability. I can help you with that. I've done about twelve machine gun shoots. If you want to talk to me after yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah, but we're gonna, uh, but we're gonna take, have some. Take the Gatling gun up there. We are gonna have some really cool machine guns though for the YouTubers to mess mm-hmm. around with. Uh, one of the machine guns that we have is a suppressed uh, briefcase machine gun. Yep. What? Yeah, it's a briefcase, but it fires. But is it the MP5 one or is it a different one? No, yeah, MP5. my brother has that set up. Oh boy. Yeah, they're they're rare. They're hard to find. So this is April what again? April twenty sixth of twenty. That sounds kind of cool. 26th. Actually, Hank, I wouldn't mind going. Yeah, we should uh, caravan up there or something. April twenty sixth. I, I, listen, or or we I, could rent a van and just load up a bunch of people and go. I think it'd be yeah. a lot of fun, actually. I think so too. I think so too. Okay, Lola, if you can hear me, April twenty sixth. We said. Yeah, yeah. I am not the person to deal with any kind of scheduling. No, so, you know, yeah, because I get in trouble with Lola if I yeah. agree. don't get me in trouble with Lola now. Yeah, hey, man, I got a wife too, so I understand that totally. Yeah, but that that actually sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. I've always been saying GOA should do a thing. Are we gonna get um like the other GOA dudes over there, or is it just the Virginia GOA? Oh, Virginia GOA is hosting it, but yeah, the other GOAs uh, are gonna be there. Jordan's gonna be there. Okay. Um, Jordan's working on this a lot with me. Okay. Uh, Eric Pratt's going to be speaking. And uh, where, what range is it that we can look it up so we can get a little bit more information on it? I'll, I'll send you that information later. We have the range, but we can't announce it yet. Um, oh, okay. I was to say yeah. for the people out there, maybe they'd have an idea. Yeah. So is there a time you're going to announce it? Yeah. Uh, 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 Walter's saying road trip. I'm yeah. agreeing well, with you. Oh, Walter's saying, ro- oh, boy. This could in be a, a party. In about a week. In about a week. In about a week. Okay. Yeah, we're we'll keep our eyes open for it. Yeah, yeah, we're obligated to hold it and tell them because they want to be the one to put it out first. Okay. Yeah, no, it'd be fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So you got a bunch of different machine guns. 
Now, yeah. what is it? You pay once one fee and you go in and shoot a bunch of different mags, or you got to pay per machine gun? How are you all structuring it? Okay, well, we're structuring it a uh, diff- couple different ways. Uh, one, most of our money is going to be coming from the sponsors. We're yep. going to have about 20 big name sponsors set up there with their booths. So people will be able to try out different things from the sponsors. Okay. Okay. Uh, then there's going to be a range fee. Uh, the machine gun stuff is still up in the air now until we get all the legal hor- hurdles jumped. Um, but we will be hosting like open ranges where people can go shoot different things. There'll be tons of guns to rent nice. as well. Hmm. Um, and then YouTubers will be able to come in like the night before, do whatever reviews, whatever videos they want to do, oh, yeah. whatever content they want to do. So we're going to be doing that. Oh, we're also going to be having giveaways and raffles for oh, yeah. an, like an AK, um, hmm. uh, a Lee Armory AK. Um, okay. There's a local company called Sterling Arsenal that's donating a gun. Nice. And uh, a lot of other manufacturers want to donate stuff. It's just that the response that we've gotten to it is a lot bigger than what I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought we were going to be like scrambling for sponsors, but now it's like. <laughs> Who, who's organizing all of this? Me. Oh, you. Oh, good luck. <laughs> hey, hey if, you want, if you want, after the, after, the, we talk, after the show, I'll help you out with some of that stuff. I've dealt with these really big events on my range. Mm-hmm. So maybe I can steer you in the right direction and help you out a little bit with it. I, I don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So after we get done talking, we'll, we'll get a little bit of information and I'll help you out with it. Yeah, yeah. like the last night I was up to 1 o'clock in the morning trying to work out the catering and stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, boy. we work all that out, too. It's pretty easy. And like I said, l- let me help you out a little bit. We'll talk a little bit afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it sounds pretty cool. I wouldn't mind doing it, Hank. What do you yeah. think? Uh, I like it. I like the idea, and I, and I like the idea of all of us caravaning up there. Can I bring my flamethrower? Uh, can, you, can, he, can we have flamethrowers in Virginia? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. yeah you legal have... except in New York and California. <laughs> I want to get that. I don't know if you saw it, but they have a drone now with a built-in flamethrower. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. <laughs> you kidding me? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That. Supposed to help with brush fires, but I'm going to yeah. have it to clean snow off my driveway. Yeah. I think they got – I saw somebody, like, they were burning up garbage, like, balloons off of high wires with them too um, so instead of climbing way up there to get to yeah. it they just burn, burn off the uh, garbage and then it just falls off that was pretty interesting was i pretty saw cool. that yeah i saw that that's cool this this sounds cool we got to put it on the calendar um where i'm down to help you guys promote uh-huh. it you know on the lead up to that you know let us know come back on talk about it all the anything that we could do to help out with it i'll do Awesome. Like everyone organizing it, uh, I got a team that's helping me organize it. We're all volunteers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when mm-hmm. the GOA is not paying us to organize it or anything, we're doing it on our own time. Okay. Um, yeah. so, no, so I think it's awesome, man. I think you'd have a lot of fun. Yeah. Someone's asking about the red flag laws with GOA. So I know that, you know, um, not we had Jordan on, I think, what is today, Tuesday? Yeah, he was on last Thursday. We did talk about it, but I know not everyone get that got that. So, do you want to say anything about the red flag laws? GOA, hands down, is against any red flag laws. Not only are they a violation of the Second Amendment, but they are a violation of the Due Process Clause of the Constitution. Yes, uh, they're basically gun confiscation orders, as Jordan likes to call them, uh, mm-hmm. and that's what they are. It, on average, it takes about ten thousand dollars to get your guns back. Um, and one thing that I don't like about them, I wrote a, a lot about them, is people don't realize that the courts that give out the red flag orders mm-hmm. are secret courts. And the information shared in those courts is never public unless the judge signs off on them being public, release of until the documents. Uh, for example, the guy that was killed in Maryland when the police came to take his guns um, – all we know so far, according to his niece, it was a family squabble, and they and he was reported not because he was a danger, but to get back at him, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. And he was killed. But we never will know what what happened in the court because the judge has so far refused to unseal the documents. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing I don't like about him is there's no accountability. Yeah. And if you look at search warrants, search warrants get approved on a 96% basis. So 
of all sorts of warrants are approved. Where red flag laws require a less boarding of proof than that does. So you have to imagine that it's almost 100%. Yeah. Um, we're going to be dealing with a lot of this. We were talking yesterday um, about uh, Jonathan from Tactical Toolbox had this uh, video that he just put up. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. He was basically talking about how they're going to do gun confiscation in the future using uh, red flag laws. And then what was the other one? The uh, trap? Oh, man, I forgot the name. It was an acronym. Basically, it's the program that they used, that they developed after they tried to assassinate um, Reagan to uh, protect the Secret Service, to protect the presidents from future threats, like predicting threats. And they want to turn that into a national thing for everybody to figure out what all of us are going to get up to. And, and he was talking about that, using red flag laws and then using our devices that we have you know, to uh, tattle on us, basically. So well, they're doing that now, Hank. Well, yeah. people don't realize that yourself. I I am an engineer by trade, so I know a little bit about this stuff. But your cell phone, every time you ping a cell phone tower, that's stored. So they can go back like six months and tell tell you exactly where you've been mm -hmm. months yeah. ago. Yeah, and the actually do use that. Oh yeah. Um, there's lots of stuff going on. I mean, if you remember, so like the GPS in your phone used to, you could switch that off. You used to be able to switch it off. Then they changed the laws where they can't bring phones into the U.S. that you could turn the GPS off. It's a whole bunch of, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things like that that are going to be used against us at some point. You know, we have got to push back on all of that stuff. Brian Welcome Quick report. Yep, Minority Report. Yep. Brian Quick wants to know: Can GOA do a, a FOIA request to get the docs? No, um, they're exempt from FOIA request. Okay. So, <laughs> unfortunately, they're they're sealed by court order. Okay. All right. And Des Seventh Avenue wants to know. Okay, so what's the GOA done about it in the states and in the courts? Uh, yep. Jordy would know more about the exact things that have been done with cases but i know they've fell off out of amicus briefs with that and they've also done a lot of lobbying with the politicians uh goa would rather lobby and get bad laws not passed mm -hmm. than passed by them them. having to sue uh yeah. we figured we can stop them there so there's been a most of the red flag law the red flag stuff that goa has done has been more on the lobbying side okay Endorsing candidates who don't support <laughs> red flag laws and also addressing candidate and addressing members of legislative bodies mm -hmm. trying to lobby them not to pass um, red flag laws. OK. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the thing that we have to do to stop all of this from uh -huh. happening is keep the pressure on the uh, politicians. Right. That I mean, that used to be like the NRA's job, you know something happened there i know you don't yeah i don't know you don't want, i know you don't want to get into that but someone has to keep that pressure on them yeah uh, uh yeah, rich was really effective say that again lobbying is really effective people okay. don't realize how effective that is okay uh and you actually have a better chance of stopping a bad law in the legislative stage than trying to sue to get it removed right Exactly. Uh, this is a super chat from Richard Hughes. He says, John, do I count as a YouTuber for the event? <laughs> Question mark. Do you know Richard Hughes? No, I do not. Oh, okay. He can, he counts. He's, he's a YouTuber. He's a, he's a YouTuber? I'll oh, vouch okay. for him. I'll vouch for him. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. Then you are invited. Uh, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter for me. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, Richard. Invited. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone's getting in there, but you know, Richard, you know, you're you can uh, you can you can come. That you're going you're going with us. I'm assuming he's going to go up with us in the caravan, right? Richard's in the back, though. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't know if I should even get into that. I don't know. Uh, Harry's Holsters uh, shouts us out. Uh, I did see that Walter was in the chat. Walter was talking about a yeah. road trip. Walter's liking the idea of this road trip, huh? He'll drive anywhere for machine guns, Walter. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it'll be fun. I think yeah. I'm excited. I'd like to go. Yeah. And then Des has another question here. What candidates are the GOA backing to protect gun owners? 
Uh, right now, what candidates are being endorsed, that would be more of a question for Jordan. I do know Maj is being um, he's being heavily promoted by the GOA, and he is backed in the Philly election. Um, what I think that needs to happen is there should be more of a concentration on local politicians than on national politicians. Yeah. Um, and then one of the things is like, if people are looking for this info on a day to day basis, how do they get this info? Cause I know there's some people they're asking a bunch of questions here. I know not necessarily all of those questions. Can you handle your, you know, you're, you've got a gig, you're writing for ammo land and I'm sure doing other things. Plus you're, you're, you're the guy in Virginia. So if people are looking for, to get these questions answered on a daily basis, how, how do they do it? Sure. There are a couple different things. Um, one thing is you can ping Jordan Stein directly on Twitter and he can get back to you with a specific answer. Um, I'm sure you have his Twitter. Mm -hmm. So there is a alert system put out by the GOA, which mm -hmm. is an email saying, Hey, this is what's going on. These are the bad laws. This yeah. is what we're doing. You don't have to be a member of GOA to receive those alerts. You can just go to gunowners.org mm -hmm. and put your email address in there, and that will guarantee that you'll get it on a daily basis. Not on a daily basis, whenever they send anything out. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. I have it already set up. I've, I've, I, I donated. It's not very intrusive, and it's very informative. I actually really enjoy it. I don't mind it. Yeah. Uh, some of them can be very intrusive. They just hit you over and over again with a bunch of garbage. So yeah, and yeah, no, it's uh, very informative. I, I do enjoy getting the, the the messages. And remember, you don't actually have to join to get the messages. You yeah. can just go on the website and just enter your email address. I know not everyone can afford to donate or yeah. wants to donate, but you can go ahead and do that. Hey, someone can come up with five bucks. Yeah, listen, whatever. I think whatever you can do, people appreciate it, even if you sign up for that. And, you know, um, I do try to look at that on a regular basis. If I see stuff that needs sharing, I try to share it. People might just want to consider that. The biggest thing sometimes is just getting the word out and uh, getting it out on different social media and all that stuff so it reaches people. That's just really the thing, right? We don't have that. Uh, GOA doesn't have that big machinery, I think, that... Um, that you might find at an NRA or something. So we are the machinery. We are the yeah. machinery. The NRA pays some of their host uh, one million dollars a year. We mm -hmm. can't afford that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I need uh, to be a host. You you want to be a host? There's no <laughs> NRA TV anymore. For one million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of money. I think I saw Lola was telling me about um, someone left L NRA ILA. I think the PR woman left no, today no. i think that was i think that just i think that just broke or something that news yeah it, the, yeah that happened uh, a few days ago um yeah she left she was a chris cox loyalist so she, yeah she, because chris cox left of course oh okay yeah all right so that's what's going on there yeah yeah uh -huh. a lot of chris cox's team left when he resigned oh, okay okay yeah so that was to be expected yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you think we're going to see those guys back? Or, you know, you know. Well, Chris Cox has already started his own lobbying firm. Mm -hmm. um, he markets himself as uh, Washington's number one problem solver. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a lot of his staff that left NRA is probably going to end up over at his lobbying firm. Hmm. Okay, interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. So, um I saw that uh, there was someone from NRA TV that didn't he get a job with you guys at Ammo Land? What was that? Um, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. Exactly. Oh, was that someone? Was that someone? He's else? grinning. Come on, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, um, I'm not sure. Um, I think you should ask Jordan about that before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> How is this a Jordan question? <laughs> Um, because I directing you, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I I'm not sure if I'm at liberty to say <laughs> whether or not the guy's working at Ammo Land. Oh, at Ammo Land. Yeah, oh. Ammo Land. Oh, yeah. Wait, I thought I saw there was. There was oh man, I got to Now I have to find that article. You said uh, there there was there was a guy that not not at Ammo Land that uh, bearing arms. Bearing arms. Yes, there you go. Bearing arms. Yeah. Bearing arms. Cam okay. Edwards. Uh, oh, no. Cam. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, Cam um, Cam went to Bearing Arms. Okay, that's true. He's running Bearing Arms. Uh, Clover Tack is out there. Shout out to Clover Tack. He says he's the a broker. groupie. Um, yeah. I have lots of groupies, you know. It's an awesome thing. Man, awesome I got to learn from you, man. I need some groupies. Yeah. Well, they're male groupies, so I don't know if you really want, if you're really about that life. <laughs> but they have guns. <laughs> oh, you know, my, my wife might get upset if there are female groupies. Oh, well, see, <laughs> they, you know, she might get more upset that there's male groupies, actually. You might be right. <laughs> she might worry more about that. So, uh, Hank, are you confirming that rumor? Uh, who, me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lola tells me my vi my video is up right now on Hank Strange. It's called "Coming Out the Closet." You guys, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That's it. It's up on Hank Strange right now. Anyone wants to see it? It's called "Coming Out the Closet." I mean, hey, you know, been in the closet long enough. What can I say, Trey? I'm but, out. Yeah, Trey already knew. So what can I say? Trey already knew. Okay. Are you all now uh, seeing your relationship together? Huh? Are you and Trey right now? Yeah, he's gonna be <laughs> who's gonna be the uh, who, who, who's gonna be with the what now, Trey? What did you just say? You're navigating. I'm driving. Oh, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so what other questions do you guys have out there? I would love to get to the questions for uh, you all. Go ahead, Trey. I think the machine gun shoot's a good idea. What about doing one in Florida? What what, what about different states? Who do we talk to to get something like that set up? Yeah, whoever the state director is um, right now, I don't know if there's one in Florida. I don't think there is. Yeah, I don't think we have one in Florida. How can uh, what's up, Trey? How do we get something like that set up in Florida, though? Yeah. It's because there's one not one in Florida. Maybe we could bring some people together and make something happen. Yeah. There's a lot of gun gun owners in Florida. There's a lot of shooting in Florida. Uh, a lot of gun manufacturers in Florida. Mm -hmm. Probably more so in Florida than I hate to say it. Most most other states. That, this is the gunshine state, baby. This is the gunshine yeah. state. Somebody I mean, better step up. Manufacturers there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I can get with Jordan and see what we can arrange. But right now, my focus is on getting this off the ground. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it sounds pretty cool. I think you guys are doing a good job so far. It sounds like fun. I'd like to know where it was at so we could plan accordingly. Have you talked to some of the local hotels to set up uh, discounts for uh, people coming in, your vendors and stuff? Uh, not yet. Uh, that's going to be done probably in September. Okay. Everything timelined out. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, we're not short of hotels in this area. <laughs> yeah. Do you don't have any events going on in April simultaneously with yours? No. Okay, just making sure because we had yeah. Biketoberfest and oh. all the hotels are booked. What is, <laughs> what is yeah. uh, Virginia going to look like in April? What's April weather like in Virginia? It's nice. It's nice. It's uh, it's cool. It's not too hot and it's not too cold. It's uh, probably around the, in the sixties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe low seventies. Just yeah. don't speak through Georgia. Yeah. Um, yeah. The... Yeah. Hey, would you blow me? Says Pink Pistol. Shout out to all the, <laughs> to those. I, I'm not. I'm cool with everything. I think one of the things I have to say. No kidding around. We should be a hundred percent inclusive of everyone in the gun community. That's, yeah. I really, I really believe that. I'm not. You know, it's not a thing. Pink Pistols is a really good organization. Uh, they do a lot of good work. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me see. We were talking about Virginia, the weather. Okay, the weather is going to be good. What is good? Like 60-something? Yeah, 60s, okay, 70s. 60s, 70s. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, you know what's good? like a machine gun shoot where every gun is fully suppressed? I'm down. I'm down with that. Yeah, well, it's indoor range, and uh, the, we're definitely the YouTubers are definitely going to be shooting machine guns. We would like to open it up to the public. Mm -hmm. We are working on that now. Uh, like I said, there's some hurdles involved in that. What's mm -hmm. some of the hurdles you're having to deal with? Yeah, uh, the ranges. Yeah, indoors, what? indoors. That's not going to be easy. That's not going to be easy. On is it a new range or we Wait, can't know the indoor range. range or an outdoor range? It's, they're indoor ranges. Uh, in Northern Virginia, we really don't have any outdoor ranges. In Virginia. Okay, so Northern how many people Virginia. are you expecting to come to this event? Right now, we're thinking about 3,000. Oh, okay. Uh, it must be one it's huge just, indoor I'm range. You, that is a big indoor. You it said, is, is it multiple ranges? No, it, it's one okay. range, but it, it's it's massive. Um, they handle 3,000 um, every year for their event that they hold in October. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty big indoor range. We, I had somebody do an indoor range big event too, and it, it was a catastrophe because of parking. 
They um, couldn't. They didn't have enough parking on site, and it became an issue. So that's why I was curious. Well, that sounds pretty cool. I'm actually, I'm we, now I'm more intrigued to get up there. Yeah, um, we already worked through all the logistics of parking and everything to make sure we have enough parking and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and the the, uh, the range that we're going to, like I said, they've handled three thousand every year for the last like. Very cool. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah. Okay. In uh, fact, they actually had space left over. Okay. As we get closer to this and everything gets worked out, let's definitely uh, talk about it, come back on. Um, you know, if you if you guys are putting up stuff, let me know. We'll try to do what we can do. Uh, Lola just gave me a note. What does John write uh, about politics and guns? Um, what new fun stuff has he been excited about? I think there's, I'm looking at the chat, there's some kind of question or someone, something that someone feels like they didn't get answered, but if I know exactly what that question is, I'll try to answer it. Yeah, um, I, I read about politics and guns, as long as it involves guns in some way. Um, although I do write a lot about uh, Antifa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I cover okay. those guys. Uh, I did a lot of research into them. I've actually been following them since about 2004, before anybody knew who they were, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I predicted before Trump got elected, if Trump got elected, you're going to see a up, upsurge in Antifa stuff. Mm -hmm. And and there definitely was an uh, upsurge in Antifa stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and the scary part about it is they seem to be getting braver and braver. In fact, uh, in Tacoma, Washington, an Antifa member tried to firebomb a a ice facility right yeah we saw that in the news man um, oh i didn't see that yeah yeah he was armed with a uh homemade ar and uh, you know 80 built on 80 percent lower mm -hmm. and uh he tried to firebomb the facility he got shot up by police in a firefight and they shot him while he was trying to detonate a propane tank mm -hmm. uh he was a member of the Puget, Puget Sound uh, John Brown Gun Club, and after he did that, they actually put up a statement saying how they support him and how he's a martyr, martyr and how he was a great guy and everyone should be doing that. I'm like, what? that's unbelievable. <clears throat> now, to prove has a bill um, up right now to designate Antifa a uh, terrorist, terrorist. organization. Why is it taking so long for us to get that done? I'll. Uh, uh, Basically, a lot of people on the left are fighting back against that. Uh, the ACLU um, have vowed to fight any any like definition of Antifa as a terrorist group. Uh, they feel that it will stifle Antifa's uh, that freedom, mm -hmm. constitutional freedoms. Mm -hmm. But if you really look at their stuff that they do compared to other terrorist groups, they are definitely terrorists. Like, uh, there was a journalist called Andy No in uh, Portland, and he was attacked recently. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, ended, I saw that. and he ended up getting a brain hemorrhage. Not only did uh, the Rose City and Tifa take credit for it, but the night before the event, they said that they were going to get him. Um, mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for this guy. We, we, we are going to attack him. Yeah. So I heard and, the mayor there is just basically. Um, making the police department stand down and then these guys feel like they have free reign there is that true absolutely in portland the mayor is also the head of police he's also basically like the chief of police mm -hmm. in portland. and he ordered his police to stand down that's been his long-running policy is for them to stand down don't get involved unless you absolutely have have to mm -hmm. so you have all these violent protests going out going on with antifa hurting people and the proud boys fighting back against antifa and hurting antifa and there's these huge riots and the police are just standing around i've seen videos where they're just standing people fighting in the streets um in fact an interesting thing is on July 5th, Antifa came to D.C. and they basically had a plan to do the same thing that they did in Portland. Uh, members of Roof City Antifa flew out with local, you know, Smash Racism D.C., which is the local Antifa group. Mm -hmm. And they had a plan to go ahead and disrupt this thing where Lawrence Southern was speaking with Mike Cernovich and stuff. 
but the DC police aren't the Portland police, mm-hmm. and they don't yeah. fuck around. Mm-hmm. So basically, they were able to stop everything before it happened. You didn't see anything that you saw in Portland because the police actually took yeah. proactive action. It's crazy. Like, I know we kind of like skipped over that real quick, but the mayor is the police chief. How the hell does that happen? <laughs> He's also the postmaster and the fire, fire chief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty weird, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, that's been like that forever? Yeah, it's been like that forever. And there's no way to undo that. It is not that I know of unless you pass a new law. Well, this is how messed up it is. And out in Oregon, they try to pass a law saying that it is a crime to commit a crime while wearing a mask. You're not allowed to wear a mask while committing a crime where that's an additional charge. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And that was voted down because it would negatively affect Antifa because they all wear masks. <laughs> Don't commit a crime. Not worry about that. Yeah, we got to protect that. Okay, what? Uh, Harry's holster says it's a good thing the violence is staying in the urban areas, not grandstanding. But if they try that shit in the rural areas, it could get extremely violent. Uh, the thing is, it is in the urban areas, the mostly African American areas. Mm-hmm. But the two sides that are fighting, it's a bunch of white people fighting against other bunch of white people in the urban areas, which mm-hmm. doesn't really make any sense to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. when it, it, I thought it was a bunch of veterans. Um, is it a bunch? Is it a bunch of no, no, veterans that are fighting the Antifa? I saw oh, a oh. bunch of veterans. They got a big fist fight with a bunch of the Antifa guys. Yeah, some 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 did, but it's mostly the Proud Boys. Okay. Uh, and Patriot Prayer. Okay. Out in out in there, uh, there was uh, some veterans that got jumped for being racist in Philly mm-hmm. and got beaten up by Antifa in Philly because they were walking near a a Trump event. So they beat them and called them racist and everything else. It was a, some Marines and they got like piled on. It's like only a couple of Marines, but like 30 people piled on them and beat them. And the thing was, they weren't even at the Trump event. They just happened to be walking by the Trump event. Mm-hmm. And another thing was they were being called white supremacist and racist, but they were Hispanic. Hmm. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know hey, yeah. Must- yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of that. Uh, there's a lot of that craziness going on. Uh, DCG 44 says we got to find a cure for stupid. Oh, we got one. We have one. No, yeah, one. it's called him. Yeah, it's no. called 115 grains. <laughs> <laughs> Injections. <laughs> Injections. Uh, I'm curious more about the Antifa because uh, you're obviously right about a little bit more than I, I actually knew. That's kind of interesting, some of the stuff you're talking about. I mean, so, uh, yeah, obviously we've seen them in Portland. Didn't we see them in New York also? Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they, they are in New York. Uh, they There was a violent uh, violence between the Proud Boys and Antifa. Uh, Gavin McGinnis, he used to be the leader of Proud Boys, but he's step away from the Proud Boys. Um, he disassociated himself with the Proud Boys. He was speaking and a bunch of Proud Boys went to see him and they were leaving and Antifa ran over and grabbed one of their MAGA hats off and they got into a fist fight with Antifa and the Antifa members lost. And they were so they were arrested because, mm-hmm. you know, they attacked these guys. Yeah with the uh, Trump hats on. Mm -hmm. There was an outpouring from a lot of people in the media that believed that the Proud Boys should be charged as well for the fight. So they actually ended up being charged after the fact, like a a couple weeks later, with assault, even though they were the ones that were assaulted. I'm not a big fan of the Proud Boys, but in that case, they were tried and... The liberal media, basically, and that's how they got charged. Okay. It was basically to, like, AOC, for example, was calling for them to be charged and stuff. So it was basically mm-hmm. to placate these people. Okay. Okay. This was in New York, right? That, yeah, that was in Manhattan, yes. Okay. I think, wasn't there just a recent incident, incident in New York, maybe in the Bronx, where people were, like, throwing water on the cops or something like that? Yeah, I saw that. Just yeah. saw that. Yeah. 
Let me see. Yeah. I don't know if I have that, that pulled up. That, that also happened. It, it, it's getting crazy. It happens a lot more than people realize. Um, just in D.C., my, my hometown, basically, they went to Tucker Carlson's house mm-hmm. when, t- when he wasn't there with his family. I saw that, yeah. That was yeah, last it, year or something, right? Yeah. Before that, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was threatened by him when I did a lot of reporting. I'm like, I don't think you're going to get the results that you think you're going to get. Right. But you didn't get any um, – you, you were never attacked. I was never attacked, no. Um See, we got a good thing in Virginia called the the right to carry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, self defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really funny because outside Charlottesville, you really don't see these violent clashes in in Virginia. But if you go like into Maryland or DC, sometimes you will. Mm-hmm. But Virginia, everyone the world. Really, Maryland? Yeah. Okay. What happened in Maryland? I'm, is there another Antifa clash there too? Really? Oh, well, in it, Maryland. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a small little incident where someone got beat up. It wasn't even like on the national news. Oh, okay. So yeah. it wasn't big of a deal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't big of a deal now, but you really don't see that in Virginia too much. Yeah. I was just looking at some video of these cops getting doused with water when they're showing up to uh, to incidents and things like that. That's interesting, New York City. <laughs> well, another thing that they're doing is uh, – they're throwing milkshakes, but they're adding quick dry cement to the milkshakes. Wow! And quick dry cement will burn your skin. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also a lot of the water you see is actually urine mm. as well. Okay. And so, what's the policy? I think New York has a policy for cops when they're attacked like that. What's that? I'm not sure what their their okay. policy is about yeah. being attacked. Yeah. Um. Okay. Maybe, listen, I think sometimes people need to have, first of all, I think New York City has way too many cops. You know, there's just some places that have a lot of cops. I would rather see better trained cops, better paid, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But some places also need to have no cops so people see what that's like. Yeah. And then some people might change their minds about that situation. So it's a little crazy to see that going on in New York. Um, I don't know, man. New York's getting worse and worse as time goes on but you know there's just not a mentality there of taking care of yourself either so that's uh one of, i mean and then new york's mayor is pretty horrible i used to think new york had some bad mayors in the past but well, de Blasio, he, <laughs> yeah. i travel to new york uh usually once every couple of months maybe once a month um mm-hmm. i have family up there mm-hmm. and I, I don't know how he gets elected like no one up there likes him <laughs> Uh, yeah, New York is weird like that, man. There's like gangs in New York. They yeah. get all the bums together and give them haircuts. And yeah, they sit them back there and cut their beards, and it's like one guy votes like six times. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Diesel Vision says it's called Chicago, Hank. Uh, okay, so which one? <laughs> which one do we think uh, is worse, Chicago or New York City? Which which has oh, more God. corruption? Chicago definitely. Chicago, man, Chicago is yeah, bad. Yeah, Chicago probably has more corruption. It's, it's part of their DNA in Chicago. Yeah, that's how you do business. Uh, we've had some bad. Uh, well, when I say we, I don't live in New York anymore. But there's been some bad um, corruption in New York in in the past. So that's happened, but not. I don't think as bad as Chicago. Uh, SoCal Gunner gave us five bucks. He says Crowder did that undercover report when Antifa was trying to disrupt the speech Shapiro was giving in Utah. Most of those Antifa folk got arrested. I think that's when Crowder, yeah, he was talking to some of them, right? And and they, yes, he was. Yeah, yeah, they they had AK in the trunk and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, shout out to Scorched Earth Firearms Training, Rob Mills. What's shout up, Scorched Earth? Yeah, he's out there. Um, do you want to talk a little bit? I know you're also covering the YouTube thing. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? What's going on what, there? The demonetization of different gun companies. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. What's going on with that? Okay, okay. Here's what's going on with that. Uh, YouTube has started demonetizing the gun channels. If your gun channel hasn't been hit, I would venture to guess within the next month it will be. Okay. Because they're just breaking it up into like small bite sized five chunks mm-hmm. um like the honest outlaw was hit i was hit bill frady from lock and load radio was hit as well hmm. 
Bill Freddy. Oh, really? I think I've been on, the, on his show. Classic Arms was it also. Yeah. Yeah. Big Firearms, yeah. Uh, and I was tagged for harmful content. Um, a couple of different things that they're doing with this is some people are getting emails, but most people aren't. So mm-hmm. when you log into your analytics, you'll see this like little pop-up. It's not even a pop-up. It's like a little thin banner at the top that says, mm-hmm. Your channel is no longer eligible for the amount of notification. And if you don't click that link, that'll never pop up again unless you get the loop, the link directly from YouTube. Okay. Um, I was demonetized for harmful content. And I looked back and I was like, I, I talk about the Second Amendment. I do live streams about the Second Amendment. I don't, you know, have any, I don't sell firearms. I don't even review firearms on my YouTube channel. I just talk about the Second Amendment. Mm hmm. So I was like, this has to be a mistake. They took a second look after my first article dropped, and they're like, nope, you have harm for content. I was like, well, what terms of service did I violate? They're mm-hmm. like, we can't tell you. But yeah. you can reapply for thirty in 30 days after you fix whatever issue you have. I'm like, you haven't told me what issue I have. Yeah. Uh, and, Billy Billy Phoenix yeah. says Hootie Who was hit also. was Did Hootie Who lose monetization on his whole channel? I don't know about that. I haven't seen him in here. Um, if anyone does know and they can confirm that, let me know. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen Hootie Who here in the chat. I think um, no, he's not here yet. Yeah, I haven't seen him, so I don't know if that's possible. I know you. That's um, I think how we initially got in touch with each other, right? You were asking me about yeah. what's going on with the channel. He, yeah, I wanted to. I was reaching out to KS Gun Guy. guy was hit also. Who? KS Gun Guy. Okay. He, Harry Salter says he was hit also. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me throw that up. Uh-huh. I was uh, reaching out to people on YouTube to see how widespread it was. Uh, and then I got inside information on how they're doing it. They're running, they're using machine learning, and they're scanning through the videos and looking for keywords like guns or, mm-hmm. or actual images of guns. Mm-hmm. And then they're hitting you because of those. Okay. So oh, they don't even know what the content is. They just assume it's bad. Yeah, yeah. I assume it's bad and it's not good because you can reapply in 30 days, but right now I think they're like five months behind re-monetization. Mm-hmm. And even mine, where they reviewed because my journalism, they reviewed because I got picked up by PJ Media and some other sites. They reviewed mine and they're like, nope, we are right. We're sticking by our mm-hmm. assessment that you have harmful content. Yeah. That's how it goes. Now, they have been hitting individual videos on our channel, usually in waves of like 20 or 30. And when they do that, we remove all those videos. All our stuff is up on GunStreamer for anyone who's interested in that. Um, so what do you think, uh, Dr. F1 says, Hootie Who was hit. Uh, let me. I'll, I'll try to reach out to him while we're talking here. So what do you think, uh, guys out there who are worried about this or people in, in, in my position and other YouTubers out there, what do you think we should be doing about this? Have a plan. Have a plan not to depend on YouTube for your ad revenue. Uh, start up a subscribe star or Patreon or something like that. Mm-hmm. Find another way you can monetize. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, what you're already doing now, uh, having everything up on GunStreamer, because when they finally do delete all the channels, which they haven't said they're going to do, but I can't imagine them not doing it, that everything will be backed up. Because mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people don't do that, and one day they're going to log in, and there's going to be no videos, and they're going to lose the whole entire livelihood. Yeah, absolutely. You should always back up your videos, have your own backups, but I know that if you get on GunStreamer, it will definitely do it. You got to have a plan way before this hits, you know, of what you're going to do. Because here's the thing that um, that I don't think people realize. GunStreamer is not the most popular thing. I'm trying to talk to people about it and get it over there. I think it's growing in popularity, okay? But when that's the alternative, you're going to need social media and other things in order to be able to communicate with people and let them know where you're at. So you might want to, like, step up those things and have some ability to get your voice out there, um, you know, quickly and let people know where you're at. So Yeah, never to picture all in your eggs in one basket. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this is a thing, you know, I know this is like, 
I don't know if everyone's thinking about this or worrying about this. I often wonder, like some people uh, um, in our community look at uh, YouTube and um, all these different social medias as kind of like sanctified. And, oh, we got to be here because we want to be in the big pond, which I get it. You know, for discovery and all of that, you want to be in the big pond. But you better be planning <laughs> for them to come down on you. It's going to happen. They get together and talk. I don't know what you found out in, in you actually investigating this, but I, I believe these guys get together, talk, have councils, make plans. I have not been able to confirm that 100%, but I did do a lot of backtracking and look at when, like, these hammers drop on different social media platforms and they do seem to be a pattern. Mm -hmm. They usually drop within one or two days of each other. I can't say for sure if that's, you know, a council getting together or if, you know, YouTube drops the ban hammer on someone and then all the other sites think, Hey, we need to drop it on, on them as well. I do have screenshots from different social media platforms. I'm not going to say which ones, Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to out my sources or anything, mm -hmm. but where internally the employees go to like their main boards, the main discussion boards, mm -hmm. and says, "Hey, this this social media platform dropped this guy. I think we should consider doing this." And then they all get together and talk, mm -hmm. and that's what happens a lot of times. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's a if it's a council or if it's more. That. Well, what about like companies like Sig and Colt? I mean, they hit these guys up too. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm that with any of the big gun manufacturers. Or they just don't care because they're not. They don't care about the money. A lot of a lot of the a lot of the big gun manufacturers I, that I know of aren't monetized to begin with. Yeah, it wouldn't make. Uh, I don't think it makes any sense. For the most part, they're not letting them do advertising. Look, the truth on YouTube is I can't do advertising. So um, people that have other channels, if a guy has a car channel or he does this thing or that thing, he could actually pay YouTube advertising and then you say, hey, run, you know, if you're doing car stuff, you say maybe uh, run my commercial on every daily driven exotic video or speed 717 or something like that. I don't know if anyone's into cars and recognizes those people, but you can do that. For us as gun guys, we actually cannot do that. Yeah, they they have a policy that's against any weapons and such as guns or knives or batons mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. You can't advertise anything like that. Yeah, we can't even do it. So, for example, I can't say, look, you know, I'm a gun guy, but I want to advertise if someone looks at Hickok, if they look at IV, if they look at Mac. I want to advertise on that. To, to, no, no, you can't do it. <laughs> you know, they're not even they won't give you the ability to do that. So the thing about all of this is how do you you know, how do you get discovery? Um, I don't know if that's something that you think of as important. But when you talk to these guys, do you hear them? You know, the, the folks you've been talking to say anything about that? Yeah, I, I, I did talk to a few people. There are certain ways around it. Um, one thing that you can do is you can like make a Hank, Hank Strange landing page that doesn't have any pictures of guns on it mm -hmm. and just talk about Hank Strange, you know, you know, where did my freedom go, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as it's not linking to any links with guns on it, then that will get you past the, the sensors. Okay. So yeah. it's, there's, there's ways around it on Facebook. It's a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Maybe this should be your new lawsuit attack. Yeah. Are you suggesting gaming the system? No, I'll never do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you think about something like that, going after them to keep us monetized and keep these guys going. I mean, mm -hmm. that would be interesting to prove if they're, uh, hey, we're just deleting you because you said the word gun. We can't, we can't sue because they have immunity right now. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, John. Yeah. It, it, well, I don't know. Look at Facebook's getting attacked right now about uh, things they're doing overseas and here. Mm -hmm. They are getting hammered right now by Congress and a few other places. Uh, they're being hammered. That, John? They're being hammered by Congress, but they're not actually breaking any laws. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lawsuit against YouTube right now by Dennis Prager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's suing them right now? I'm not sure how successful that's going to be. Um, what I would like to see happen, I'm not for government regulation in most cases, 
but I would love to see these giant social media platforms be categorized as utilities and then they wouldn't be able to discriminate. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that I you see, that's one of the things, the conflicts that we have, right? We don't want more regulation. They probably are utilities because where else do you go other than YouTube? You know, where else do you go other than Twitter? Um, and then they have immunity. That was written into the law a long time ago. They have immunity right now. I know there's some guys out there trying to remove that immunity, but that's not going to be easily done. Yeah, I think the best bet would be to categorize them as utilities. I think that would work a lot better than going after the immunity because that that's a whole another rabbit hole that you have to go down to. Yeah a lot of different things and a lot of that immunity was built in so that google or whatnot you can search for whatever you want and if it comes up you know even if it's not legal like if you search for like pirated 50 cent album and it comes up youtube can't be sued because they have immunity not youtube uh, uh, google can't be sued because they have immunity or if somebody uploads a movie to youtube as long as youtube has the mechanism to remove it they can't be sued for hosting that movie mm -hmm. and that's actually a good thing so i don't think you really want to remove that immunity but by categorizing them as utilities then that's kind of a workaround and that's just an idea that i've been spitballing myself mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if anybody's actually working on that or say that again that's just an idea I've been spitballing myself. I'm not sure if anyone's actually even thought about doing that or not. Okay, but what's the workaround? Categorizing them as uh, utilities. Oh, d doing the utilities? Legally can't discriminate. Right. Um, so um, you can be a Nazi and they still have to provide you power. Yeah, I think we were talking about that a little bit before the elections and we were trying to see if we can get people to uh, look at it in con when they had Congress, you know, when they had the Senate and everything. But... Um, yeah, I don't know that they really, really want to do that. Um, some, uh, who was it? Kiaski wanted us to explain exactly what the whole uh, immunity thing is. And, um, you know, you can probably elaborate on this. But basically, it was a setup so that they're not liable for things that happen on the platform. Saying the platforms are so big, they can't be sued. They can't control everything that happens on there. Therefore, they can't be sued. Um, now, what's happening is that they're doing things to us saying, oh, we've got to do this to these gun guys because this stuff might be harmful if someone happens to see this video, but uh, that you can't be sued anyway. So this is but this is just really a tactic for them so that they could start eliminating us. Uh, how close am I on that one? Yeah, yeah you're really close. Um, basically, like you said, if someone like uploaded a whole movie onto YouTube they wanted to protect YouTube from being sued by like the MPAA and being shut down because if that would happen, then everyone would be at risk and there'd be no video sharing platforms, no social media because it would be too risky and they basically get sued out of existence every time they popped up. Mm -hmm. So that's why the immunity is for. So that immunity is actually a, a good thing. Um, but you're right. They are using it to push their politics mm -hmm. and by talking to people who are who are gun guys on our side who works for these giant social media platforms what i'm being told is that the people out in silicon valley uh the menlo parks the you know mountain views on the whole valley is that they don't realize how far far left they are because their politics is commonplace where they are so they're not realizing that they're actually being you know biased but they actually are mm -hmm. um oh, did, did you just say there's some gun guys up there making some decisions uh yeah okay. uh, facebook had a guy who left recently he retired uh his name was chuck rossi mm -hmm. uh, you should look him up he was the head of engineering for facebook and he is a massive gun guy <laughs> Really? Okay, that's cool to know. Like, but except uh, he retired, so I don't yeah. know what that says. Yeah, too bad we can't get a bunch of guys in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be nice, right? Just yeah. And all the different platforms. Yeah. Richard Hughes gave us a couple of bucks here. He says Prager Prager U is a great YouTube channel. Yes, I, I'm not going to argue that. Um, uh, Armament and Axis says uh, we got a copyright strike on a video when they said the music was from. 
one uh, one minute, three seconds, two minute, five, or something. The, uh, the only music there was gunfire, but that was music to my ear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's another thing that people are doing um, mm-hmm. that I want to write about in an upcoming article is that these anti antis are claiming like firearm sounds and stuff as their copyright so they can falsely copyright strike people wow oh so that is it so that's actually a tactic that's a tactic yes wait say that one more time they're, they're copywriting like gun sounds and stuff like that and then they're filing copyright strikes against videos um i haven't found it that's like the third incident I heard interesting it. So that's like copyright the. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Someone said <laughs> Ice Ice Baby on the – just said Ice Ice Baby like that and got a copyright strike before, so. Wow. Yeah, and the thing is is that there's not really a lot you can do about it, to be honest with you. It's up to them to uh, make those decisions. Yeah, the copyright uh, strike system on YouTube is screwed. How did copyright a gun sound? I oh, know. I'm just curious. That's kind of interesting. So they, the exact harmonics and the sound, so they just take, what, like a 9 millimeter Breda, shoot it, and copyright the sound? Or download it. Or download it. Yeah, yeah. but if they're downloading it, they don't own it. They didn't actually produce it. Well, the, the, you really can't copyright a gun sound, but they're claiming that it's cop. They're claiming copyright strikes. No, I haven't heard this before. I'm kind of mm-hmm. curious. Yeah. It sounds This is like crazy. the third time I've heard about it. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm sure it's going on, but uh, basically all they do is they log into the YouTube system and they upload a sound clip. Mm-hmm. YouTube doesn't require them to submit any paperwork saying nope. that they actually own it. Yep, it's just a nuisance thing, you know. Um, a lot, lots of that stuff. Like I've the music that I use on my channel, I made it myself. I've been using it for a while, and every now and then I'll get a challenge on my own music, and I'm like, yeah, I've been using this for a long time. You guys have to go look. I've been using yeah. this, you know, since this, since like 2013 or something, and then they remove it. But sometimes they're like, yeah, we don't care. That's got a copyright strike on it because of- somebody's saying Car- Harley copyrights their sound. Yeah, but they also bill all the tailpipes for that too. So it's yeah. a very unique sound. I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just curious. I've never heard that before. That's yeah. uh, so what? So if I go copyright my 50 cal and my 50 cal suppressor and my flamethrower, is that what you're kind of saying? We well, should protect ourselves against our sounds too. Well, what they're doing is they're uploading into the YouTube system. They're not actually copywriting it. They're just oh, okay. claiming a copyright. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got a copyright strike because I said I think we're alone now on one of my videos. Oh, and they thought you were yeah. doing the song. And they thought I was doing a song for him. Uh, <laughs> um, <I know. laughs> yeah. That's funny. He Asky says, so can we copyright, protect crying, and copyright strike all these anti-gun crybabies? Uh, that would be great. Yeah. Um, and then Armament and Axis says, uh, uh, I was shooting a video with my son, Hill Climb Ohio, JB. He uploaded it to his channel. And he got the same strike. Yeah, so there might be something actually going through there. And you guys yeah. made that particular sound, and the and the bot picked it up. Yeah, it's something that I've been working on, but I haven't been able to independently confirm that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, I've heard it a few times, so I'm like started making a theory up, and then I started talking to people who said that it has been brought up in different anti-gun forms because mm-hmm. I have. I have memberships to all these anti-gun forums. Where like do you the, find the time for this? I sleep about an hour, two hours a night. Wow. Hey, what a coincidence. <laughs> okay, so listen, I think there's a lot of testing of the fences going on right now, and they're trying to figure out ways to shut us down to stop us. You know? uh, they definitely are. Yeah, and we, and we just have to come up with... Um, with uh, workarounds to that. What um, Have you ever thought about the whole idea of us having our own platforms? What's your thoughts on that? I uh, mean, own social media platform? Yeah, yeah, in the in the two-way I, community. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's really necessary because there are platforms out there that are very two-way supportive mm-hmm. that we, we can move to. That's not the hard part because there's like MeWe, for example, that's two-way supportive. And mm-hmm. I like Minds and Gab that are both two-way supportive. Okay. But it's getting people to use those platforms instead of the Facebooks and the Twitters and the YouTubes. 
Yeah, it's hard to get them. They already used to it. it I mean, they're that, already that, used to using those platforms. They don't want to switch, do they? Yeah, that's that's the challenge. You know, you can have a Minds account, but you, you keep in touch with your grandma, who there's no way in hell you're going to get her into Minds, but you use Facebook to get in touch with her. So your mm-hmm. coworkers all use Facebook, so you use Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. And getting them to switch over to Minds, that's the hard part. Even if you go to Minds, then now you're going to have to switch back and forth, and people by nature are lazy. So, mm-hmm. so go back and Right. Brick says, like, what platforms? What platforms would you suggest people get on? Uh, for social media, like Facebook alternatives, I would use Minds. Minds, um, okay. They're great. Freedom of speech guys. Uh, the founder actually did a Joe Rogan podcast. Okay. I think I have that one. I have an article about all alternatives. Mm-hmm. You know, Twitter alternative would be Gab. That's uh, pretty okay. good. Twitter yeah. alternative as well. I'm gonna throw up your. Uh, I'm gonna throw up the. I'm gonna throw up the, the uh, page here so folks can see. Um, you know your articles on Amoland. Yeah, uh, I did like a part series on different technologies that yeah. you can use. Yeah, it's uh, Amoland slash author slash John uh, Crump. For anyone who's looking for it, there's a bunch of different things on here. We should probably do a video sometime about that because I think, you know what I think? All of this stuff is interesting to me. I think as gun guys, we don't think about it that much. Some people know more than others. Um, But we do have to think about all these things because it's coming, you know. And this is a weapon being used against us that we don't know anything about or we don't know very much. And we do really need to, uh, you know, think about it and and try to figure out what's... uh, what's what's happening here um that would be chicken little saying that the sky is falling but the sky is falling yeah <laughs> and that's why i've been trying to push all these articles lately about mm-hmm. you know alternative what you can use mm-hmm. this is only ramping up towards the election oh yeah uh, oh yeah you're gonna see tons of stuff mm-hmm. uh i i've seen internal documents that you know basically are about the election and stuff like that. Okay. Any good juicy uh, stuff we need to know about? Uh, there's going to be a massive crackdown on almost all social media platforms oh, for anything that's going to look suspicious. Speaking of speak of the devil, tech chairs fall as U.S. finally admits it's investigating big tech for antitrust. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Just came across my feed. Okay. Yeah, Ted Cruz is leading the charge there on that one. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Um. So that that's pretty cool, but yeah, if right now a lot of social media platforms are going to anything that looks political, they're going to make you fill out a form before you can run it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Billy Phoenix says, "I would certainly love to learn more alternatives." Hank. Yeah, you know what? I I don't know if you're interested in that. I think maybe we should do something like this. Get a couple of techie guys in here or something, and just let everyone ask questions. Say, okay, what should we do? Can we Classic go over here? Classic farms, Hank. Huh? Those guys built their whole website and built a bunch of stuff. Classic farms. Classic farms. I was dealing with them. They're pretty pretty slick guys, mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're very tech orientated. Like they do uh, the technology and stuff. So yeah. I think I'll, when we get off, I'll give you their information. Maybe you can get them on the show. Okay. Without, without giving out too much because I'm still under NDAs, mm-hmm. uh, I developed a lot of one of the big social media platforms. Oh, really? Uh, oh, interesting. Oh, I know that. Okay. Yeah, how long do we have to wait before you get off the NDA, dude? Uh, 79 years. <laughs> Holy. What? That sounds like a record contract that you signed. See you then. <laughs> 70, <laughs> is, are you serious? No, I just can't talk about, like, the back end or anything like that. Okay, can you give us a hint? Uh, what is in the logo? What color is the logo? That would probably give it away. <laughs> I'm about it, man. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. I'll take that. But I really do think... Um, uh, I, I do think it's a good idea if I can put it together to have some people like just come in so everyone could think about this. Because the big thing is communication. If we can't actually talk to each other, if people don't know where to find me or other guys out there, it's going to be really tough. If we figure out ways that we communicate, that we can communicate with each other, then that's going to allow us to say, okay, so we're all over here. This is where to find us and this is how we can organize. I think that's a big part of it. That's why I've been giving away, like that's why I got a, another phone number on my phone and i've been giving that number away so that people can reach out to me directly and i actually think that's pretty powerful um 
sometimes people call me on there, but most of the times people text me and they're telling me things or, or checking in and all that kind of stuff. And and I think we need something like that, right? It's just like in a um, disaster situation where you need two-way radios kind of a deal. Yeah. One of the things I do do on my live stream, whenever I do a live stream, is I use Restream.io, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I broadcast it to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Periscope. Mm -hmm. Okay, good idea. So if any platform gets shut down, there's other ones there. Yeah, yeah. I think we, I can do that with what I'm using to do this stuff. I just haven't uh, dug yeah, into it. Yeah, I'm sure I know what you're using. You're probably using uh, Ecamms Live. Man, you're too good. You're evil. Yeah, <laughs> he's a big guy. Yeah, it's a we're, we're dealing with super nerd. We got to put him together with Babyface. See what happens here. Yeah, no, your Babyface would love you. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. 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 Transmissions before you know it. Yeah, you can you can broadcast to everything but Facebook because they have a weird block. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, like for if you want to broadcast to Facebook as well, you need to have uh, like a reaching like a Restream IO, which will actually take you actually fit everything into Restream, then it restreams it through different um, APIs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very important. By the way, just everyone who's here hanging in with us, please smash the thumbs ups if you can. We appreciate nice it. Up. Do the thumbs up. I noticed we got a lot of thumbs downs. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, Care Bear on the Holiday Road says, uh, what needs to happen is make their, these social media platforms publishers and count all their promoting of their candidates' choice of campaign contributions. I think that's one of the things Ted Cruz is talking about. Do you think he's actually going to get anything to happen here before the oh, election? Well, you can go and look up like who donated what. Uh, OpenSecrets.org. Uh, you can put in like uh, whoever you want from the tech world. Mm -hmm. And it will tell you how much money they donated to what candidate candidate because when they donate money to the candidate, the candidate has to report that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So secrets.org will tell you exactly who they donated to. Oh, okay. Somebody said uh, Twitch seems to be somewhat two A friendly. Would you would John agree or does he have a different view? Well, Twitch right now is two A friendly, but uh, Twitch is parent company is Amazon. Mm. which isn't too way friendly mm -hmm. so i think that might be a little bit left over from when twitch was a separate company mm -hmm. i can see that changing mm -hmm. okay that's interesting um uh, are you on twitch i am on twitch okay um how is it for you? A, uh yeah it's a it, it, it's interesting um it's really hard to get viewers on twitch because not a lot of people have Twitch unless they play video games. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is that if you if someone goes on Twitch, is that the thing to do? Do video games, or do people get on there and do other things? Uh, there is a category for just chatting, which is like, <coughs> you know, but it's ninety five percent video games. Okay, ninety five percent video games. What? <coughs> and most of the just chatting people are uh, cam girls, basically. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, cam girls, really. All right. Yeah. Um, so what games do people really like to play on there? I'm, I'm thinking about doing, that's why I'm asking you. I was thinking about, um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm already on Twitch as Hank Strange. I was thinking about getting like a PS, you know, PlayStation in here and start doing some stuff. Uh, Fortnite, um, Overwatch are the big ones. Okay. Now that's Twitch TV, right? Is that what you call it? Yeah, it used to be called Justin TV, and okay. then went because those guys are on it too. The Classic Farm guys have that also. Mm -hmm. They do a some kind of channel on there also. I don't have it, so I haven't looked at it. But I am now. I'm kind of curious now that you're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, Devil yeah. Devil Dog uh, Devil Dog Gamer is on there. He's pretty big on Twitch, I think. I I'm, I don't know if he's the biggest gun guy that's on there. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, Sorry for boring your audience with all this technical no. talk. I'm not bored. I don't know if the no, folks out there are bored. Yeah, I'm they're not. Like, I'm not no, bored by. It. I think it's good stuff. We should really do a Twitch thing. I think it would be great. I haven't played video games in a while. It'd be great for people to be able to come in there and kick my butt playing some video game. You know. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun time. Yeah. Um, Armament and Axis says not a gamer. Um, and then Clayman three hundred two said play Splitgate. What's that? I'm not sure. Yeah, and <laughs> the motorboater says Mac is on Twitch. Yes, he is. 
He's yep. on Switch. Brick says Ghost Recon Wildlands. So there you go. Um, I'm still curious about some of the other forums that are the different ways to get out to our public besides like YouTube and these other places. I mean, you harped on a couple more, but I mean, which one do you are you really leaning towards? Which one already in play that we could use to get more out to our audience? Mind, which is really cool because M I N D. Yeah, like M I N D S dot com. Oh, okay, yeah. mind. It's it's really cool because one of the things that they do is they deal a lot with cryptocurrency. Mm, okay. So, uh, if you get uh, like five thousand views, they will give you a piece of cryptocurrency. And people can actually donate to you in cryptocurrency. Oh, okay. Mines. Interesting. Mines. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, so it actually pays you back. They, Everyone automatically gets a cut of the ad revenue. Right. Okay. okay. No program or anything like that. Right. Well, that's interesting. Is it pretty popular or is it easy to use? Oh, it's very easy to use. Um, behind Facebook and Twitter and probably Gab and some of the other social media networks, it's it's the biggest challenge to Facebook there is. And the guys that run it are very, very libertarian. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they just let anybody talk whatever they want to talk. As long as it's not illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mine. Got, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to check that Yeah, out. we all got to get up on there. American Gun Chick says Alex Zedra course, yeah. is a Twitch monster, and she is very pro 2A. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Shout out to um, AGC out there. Uh, Just Dano says, since, hold on, let me, since Hank outed, uh, TYM formally, I will comment on it. Did I out someone? I thought, I th- okay, <laughs> maybe someone was already out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll see, that's, up, that. that's something from, okay. that's something from my video. We'll see what's go what's going on there. Um, uh, oh, Bricks wants to know, when is the discussion on Tactical Toolbox video? He did a real good job on that. I agree with it. I don't know if you saw that video, John. No, I haven't. Yeah, it's on the. It's the. I think it's the last video that Tactical Toolbox put up. About um, red flag calls. Yeah, hold on. Let me yeah. see. Uh, uh, like, <laughs> I mean, like how they're gonna confiscate your guns. Yeah, I saw that pop up. I just haven't had a chance to yeah. watch it. Yeah, I think it would be cool for you to take a look at it. I think he uh, put a pretty good argument together there. Yeah, I've been dealing yeah. with a uh, article about uh, new three D printing technology that will let people 3d print with metal infused plastic tell us about that man oh you're talking nasa now yeah oh you're talking my language 3d print metal i'm I'm, you know i'm from engineering background so Uh Uh (laughs) i get all the stories have to do with engineering Mm -hmm. but they're a company out of la that developed a 3d printer that uses metal infused polymer so it's a hell of a lot stronger it can take a hell of a lot more pressure than a regular 3D printed gun. Okay. It's not only used for guns, but they're not object. They don't object to their technology being used for guns. Right. How uh, much? What, what does that cost? I'm waiting. I've been going back and forth trying to get prices and everything for them. Uh, that's what I've been doing all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, really company, what company is that? Uh, it's a 3D EO. 3D EO. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, all right, yeah. So that's going to change everything. If you want to see the gun grabbers go crazy mm-hmm. when they have that out, where you can actually print a AR-15 that will fire more than a few shots before breaking, mm-hmm. hmm. <laughs> that's going to make them go insane. Yes, yeah, so of course there'll be um, the, you know there'll be laws and things like that that people will try to. Uh, put into effect. Uh, Eli EDC says something. What's this about PewDiePie? PewDiePie has joining a uh, joining live stream platform. D-Live. We're talking cryptocurrencies. Okay. Sorry, Hank. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's you. That's yeah. to you. Okay. What do you think? Speaking of cryptocurrency, what do you think about like um, decentralization when it comes to social media and all these different platforms? Like, is there a way to use the um, you know, what they use to uh, support Bitcoin to... The blockchain. Yeah, like blockchain. It, can that help us? And is anyone working on that? Uh, everyone's working on that. Mines is partially decentralized. It's not totally decentralized, mm-hmm. but it is partially decentralized, and they do rely on the blockchain for that. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's the future 
that you can see a lot mm-hmm. of different potential elevation of uh, social media platforms. Yeah, uh, I think Gab's working on it as well. Uh, but there's other big places that are working on decentralized stuff. BitChute, which is a YouTube alternative, is decentralized. Oh, it is totally. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but there's no. Uh, well, are 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 there any uh, gun ones yet? Uh, I don't, not that you know. I, I know some people argue that we don't really need it. We just need like open platforms where people don't have to worry about all this stuff. But not for guns specifically. But I think BitChute would be the most the most gun friendly of the decentralized platforms. Um, like. Uh, there's a senator out of New Jersey that tried to get BitChute to remove Ivan the Troll. If you don't know who Ivan the Troll is, he is – his real name is unknown to the general public. Mm-hmm. He's a cool guy, and he makes some of the baddest-ass uh, 3D printer, printer files there is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like he produced a Glock 3D printed lower, and it has some metal inserts that you can buy on on Amazon. Okay, they, they sell them on Amazon. I'm not sure mm-hmm. they know what what they're for, mm-hmm. but uh, through his testing, and I verified his testing, uh, he has 5,000 rounds through it without uh, wow. without breaking. Okay, it relies on metal inserts too. But yeah, he does some great. 3D printer stuff, and he got kicked off of every platform. He got kicked off of Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. YouTube, everywhere. Okay. So he's releasing all his files on BitChute. Oh, okay. So that's where people can go yeah, grab that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that I heard from Hootie Who that he's not being demonetized. So trying to double check that right now. Um, Okay. I don't remember him mentioning anything about it, Hank, but that yeah. doesn't mean he wasn't. Yeah. So, a lot of people don't know they're demonetized until the check's not going to come in because they don't make it obvious. Okay. So you can't – so tell us again how someone would know. Uh, there is a link that I can send to you um, that will show you if you've been demonetized or not. There's a – when you first go in your analytics, the first time you're demonetized, it will show you – a small little banner that's about like one tenth of the screen, one probably even less than that. Mm-hmm. That'll say you've been demonetized. Click here to learn more. Mm-hmm. If you don't click there, you would never see it again unless you get the link from YouTube to check. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Hootie Who is saying that he's not fully demonetized, but about half the videos. So that's the thing. I think I think everyone's getting hit with like a huge number of the videos, a quarter, half three quarters or some people just get in the whole thing all of well so. according to youtube they they've always had a policy against you know showing firearms and like you know linking to firearm sales or you know saying hey this is such and such mm-hmm. but they just never enforced it until now mm-hmm. yeah and if you look at their at the tos it, it that's in there but a month ago when i looked at it when i first got demonetized before my stories come came out mm-hmm. that wasn't in there Okay. And all of a sudden, oh yeah, it's always been there. I looked, I was like, what? Yeah. Okay. But my, mine doesn't even have anything to do with actual firearms. It's the Second mm-hmm. Amendment. Yeah. Well, that's uh, dangerous enough. That's probably more dangerous. Yeah. You know, to these guys, that's probably more right. dangerous. Yeah. Um, let's see. I want to go over. Are there any super crazy articles? I'm I'm going to show your um, your page again on Ammo Land. I see the woman that got arrested after stealing husband's guns to turn into police. Have you done a follow up on that one? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Uh, there's not really too much movement on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah she, she, she was abused, so I kind of felt bad, mm-hmm. but. Her husband wasn't also live, was not living with her, mm-hmm. and he went and she went and broke into his his apartment where she had never been before, mm-hmm. and stole her gun. Yeah. Her Did you hear plate. about that, Trey? No, no. What's going on? Well, I don't think I read that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want you want, go ahead, John. I'll let you. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. So this guy got arrested for domestic abuse mm-hmm. of his ex-wife. All right. So while he's in jail, she goes to his apartment, which she's never been to, breaks into the apartment, takes all his guns, 
brings him to the police station and goes, these are my husband's guns. <laughs> and, the, and the cop goes, so you're telling me you broke into his place and you stole all his guns and committed grand larceny. And, she's and she like, says yes, basically. Yeah, yes. yeah. So they arrested her. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they arrested her. <laughs> they threw her in well, a- you never know nowadays. Uh, if it was in Portland, they'd probably uh, help her out. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of... Uh, that was in Florida, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, she she definitely got arrested then. Yeah, there's a lot I think of. It was uh, in Tampa. I think it was in. Maybe at Safety Harbor. Yeah, no, there's a lot of Safety uh, Harbor. There's a lot of Democratic lawmakers in Florida mm-hmm. that are trying to pressure the DA to drop the charges against her. Right, because of uh, domestic abuse. Domestic abuse. Yeah, um, that's still not she really the way to go. Please send him to his apartment the legal way. Well, he got yeah, arrested, right. so yeah. There's, you know, there's things that you can do. Um, yeah, that's not. I wouldn't advise other people to get into that. Here, here's the weird thing: is he's still missing one gun that she says she didn't take, mm-hmm. but now it's gone. Mm-hmm. Of course, she took it. She broke in, so she absolutely she took it. Yeah, it was, it's an AR-15. Like all the other guns have been, she turned in, but the AR-15. She says she didn't take it. She didn't see an AR-15. Now he has to report it stolen. Yeah. So he's also, is he uh, still locked up? Uh, he they're, they're all out on probation. Um, looking into the background, it looks mm-hmm. like this might not be an isolated incident between the two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They might have some sure weird stuff this. going on. Yeah, I'm sure they do this a lot. Uh, I, saw, I, I, I saw that there's obviously people coming in here to uh, go after me asking me whether or not I could back up the things that I say about these guys. They back it up themselves. Sam backs it up himself. He shows three different spreadsheets. That's my answer to you. Go look at all his different spreadsheets. Uh, if, I, if you have three different spreadsheets for, for someone you're doing business with, you are not doing good business. I'm <laughs> interested in the truth, uh, mm-hmm. and I don't have a dog in this fight, but I will say in Hank's defense, I have heard from other people that he worked with that I don't know personally mm-hmm. that told me the same thing. Yeah. There's lots of it. I, I hear from people all the time. There's lots of things yeah. so, going so on there. People. Yeah. One of the it things is. we have in the gun community is people do certain things where they like take advantage of the other guys and they know they can get away with it because no one wants to come out and say, Hey, this, this guy's uh, pulling a scam or whatever. So you know, it's the way that it goes. It's the way that I go, that it goes. So, and then you can see how these guys just keep going on the attack or whatever. That they obviously have something to hide instead of just coming out and uh, saying. And if you looked at my video that I put up today, you'll see that uh, Never Enough Ammo himself sent me an email telling me that he doesn't trust Sam from Fortune Freedom. So, you can. There's that. I mean, <laughs> that's funny. I think personally. So, um, you know, that's it. I'm gonna, I, I want to go on to some other stuff here. Did you have some other crazy articles that we missed? Um, I have tons of crazy articles. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I don't know, Trey, if you have. Let's see what uh, – are you looking at Are you looking at his uh, page, Trey? Well, well no, I, was, I was looking today. didn't see too much on the news. Hold on, let me look again. Well, well here's one thing that uh, might be interesting to your, your viewers is – I don't know if they're familiar who John Lott Jr. is. John but he runs the uh, the Crime Research Center. Okay. A big two A advocate. He mm-hmm. was recently banned from Twitter because he posted that according to the New Zealand Shooters Manifesto, mm-hmm. uh, he was left wing and and wanted gun confiscation. Mm-hmm. And so they banned him for that in New Zealand? Yeah. Or just Twitter? Yeah. Twitter banned him. Twitter. Manifesto. Yeah, but that was actual 100% true. Right. Well, yeah, it was true. Yeah, but Twitter doesn't believe that you could put the truth up there. I mean, that's what we're dealing with nowadays, man. Um, did you see the Did you see the Twitter people when they went on Joe Rogan? But I, I looked at it both times. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, um, I, I have. Um, I've been in big arguments with uh, Twitter people before. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's really funny because one of the Twitter, big Twitter guys, follows me, even though he hates the Second Amendment. And uh, he was always commenting on everything I do, saying, oh, Second Amendment's bad, blah, blah, blah. Why? 
he never really gave me an answer. I just thought okay. he was a troll. Mm-hmm. And then and I was like, this guy comments on like almost everything I, mm-hmm. I, I post. I was like, who is this guy? So I found his LinkedIn, and it turns out that he is like the director of communications for Twitter. <laughs> Since okay. I deal with Twitter, yeah, go figure mm-hmm. that. You know, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, the director. Um. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, let me do this shout out. I did want to shout out Coffee Radio. I did his podcast today, so that should be coming out sometime soon. I'll let you guys know. Uh, Coffee Radio, he's a guy doing podcasts out there. If you're into podcasts, check him out. And I did appear on the podcast today for about an hour. So there you go. It was actually a pretty good conversation. Got into some, uh, you know, got into some, uh, like, where did I come from stuff. Kind of the legend, which is not really, kind, of, yeah. kind of like a Joe Rogan podcast type thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, he just, he you know we just called in. It's just an audio thing, but you know it's been a while since like uh, someone asked me, oh how how did you start doing this? So you know I think it was a good conversation though. One of the things we were talking about is you don't have anything you can't defend. That's what I would tell people. If you have something or you think you have something but you have no way, way of defending it, then you don't really have it. So that's uh, that's my opinion on that. Uh, let's one ahead. one thing that uh, I would like to bring up is a, a while ago I filed a freedom of information request mm-hmm. to New Jersey because New Jersey banned magazines and required them all to be turned in. Mm-hmm. And uh, my freedom of information request came back, uh, I think, in March. And the number of magazines that were both turned in was zero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I filed another one again just to get an update see if anybody else has turned it in and the number is still zero okay i got that back today so huh. <laughs> got control measure yeah. uh, how measure. much money did they spend on that nonsense a lot here's the funny thing though the d uh, the the ga uh the ag mm-hmm. in new jersey mm-hmm. he's really really anti-gun mm-hmm. um, he never told police how to enforce the law or when to enforce the law. Mm-hmm. So all my contacts in the state police are saying they still don't have a policy to enforce the law, so they're just not going to enforce it mm. um, because they have no idea how to enforce it. Mm-hmm. And this is the type of law that's going around like in different states as well. Mm-hmm. So my question is, how do you enforce a, a law for, that you don't know how to enforce? How, do, how are the police supposed to do it? I don't know. Maybe they don't want to deal with it. Yeah, um, there's going to be lots of laws like that that we're going to wonder how the hell they uh, enforce it, to be honest with you. You know, we're going to be dealing with lots of stuff like that, that they have no way. Doesn't New Jersey, is it New Jersey to just sign the smart gun? Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah What's up? So how, They don't work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Tell me about that. I haven't heard much about that. Uh, I don't know too much about it. Uh, I do know the James Bond read your fingerprint gun, the special gun that doesn't exist. Yeah, basically. Um, The smart gun technology read your DNA. Yeah, yeah. The the smart gun technology which they are promoting is one that is I wouldn't want to depend my life on because even the companies that produce these so-called smart guns admit that they're not 100% effective. Mm-hmm. I'm reading it a lot of times, <laughs> you know. If you have smart people, gun technology in me is more training. Yeah. <laughs> but like a lot of the smart gun technology, you wouldn't want to depend your life on because if you pull the trigger, you don't know that it's going to go off mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all our guns need to be stupid. We need We yeah. need to be the smart ones. Yeah. You know, the technology is not there. I mean, mm-hmm. the biometrics has, I don't know if you've ever used a hand scanner or fingerprint yeah. scanner. Sure. Yeah. They fail all the time. Yeah. Even the, even the government ones fail all the time. The really high end ones. When we were working in the prison, they had to make you run through like three or four different times just so it read your full palm. Yeah. Right. And imagine that you have to have a gun that does that. Yeah, electronics and guns don't necessarily go well. I mean, I'm obviously there's some red dots and stuff. But um, I remember when I was talking to Mike Deddy about guns across the border, you know, where um, the ATF let all these guns go, and they were trying to track some of them and putting trackers and AKs and things. That, that, that didn't work for like two seconds. 
You know, there's just really th- like that whole concept of being able to do those kinds of things with guns. Um, it's it's a lot of nonsense. But, you know, they're going to try that because obviously if they get that right, then they're going to uh, mandate that every gun has to be that. Right. Yeah, I, th- I think the goal is not to have smart guns, is to make guns so incredibly expensive that no one can afford them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, just like Europe. Yeah, it's just like the ammo, um, you know, the ammo background checks and things like that that people have to go through now. Oh, in California? Yeah, in California, yeah. yeah. Um, that, how is that working out? Do you, have you been keeping keeping? Yeah, time? not very well. Okay. Uh, the system... Mm-hmm. doesn't really work that well um it's always down mm-hmm. and a lot of times people can't buy ammo and they don't seem like affordable like, care yeah they don't seem in a big rush to fix it mm-hmm. one of the things out of california that is really scary though talking about california is the firearms policy coalition is actually suing on this uh basically what they call assault weapons Mm-hmm. which we might refer to as modern sporting rifles. Uh, they said anyone who owned it before, I can't remember the date in 2017, can still keep it as long as they register it. And they haven't tell such dates register it. And they had a clock, a countdown timer and everything for people to register it. And what happened was the site broke that day, the, like on the final two days, mm-hmm. and they didn't fix it. And not only did they not fix it, they, they didn't extend it either, did they? They didn't extend it, and they said, "Well, if you didn't register it at that time, you know, you're a felon now." <laughs> okay. And yeah. So even though even though that they it was their fault mm-hmm. that these people couldn't register it, and I heard somebody from the Firearms Policy Coalition talking about it, saying that it's just like you know the IRS, like the IRS computers go down, they'll they'll extend it. They just don't say, oh, you owe all these penalties because you should have not have waited till Sorry. now. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Their, their official response was gun owners should not have waited until the last minute to register for their firearms. Uh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> then don't register. You know, that's the bottom line, you, you know. Yeah, don't register. Exactly. Yeah. Don't register. Yeah, but a lot of these registrations were processed after the after it went off. Mm-hmm. The time. Oh, so even though that they submitted it, it wasn't processed until after the timer. Mm-hmm. But they're still considering those people in possession of illegal firearms. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, listen, I saw this news. This is the truth about guns. Uh, they do talk about politics and guns. Uh, I'd like to get your take on that because I know some gun blogs don't do politics and guns together. Um, they put up this article with Ted Nugent. Um, says, T- did Ted Nugent just come out for NRA reform? Ted Nugent posted the following on his Facebook page this afternoon. And basically, it's a video of our buddy uh, Pincus, Rob Pincus, uh, talking about Save the 2A. Have you seen that? I haven't seen the video. I know Rob. He's a pretty good guy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know Ted has been a true believer in the actual mission of the NRA Mm -hmm. and not so much the being a celebrity. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not a board member in name only. Mm -hmm. He actually cares about the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can say a lot of things about Ted, but he really does care about the second amendment and i believe that he really does want to save the the second you know the nra Mm -hmm. and i think believe rob hearts in the right place too Mm -hmm. um like i said uh, i'm a goa rep but Mm -hmm. i don't want to see anything happen to the nra Mm -hmm. that will just give the gun grabbers another victory Mm -hmm. yeah and then they'll push on you guys and keep pushing yeah, we don't we don't want to give them any victories. Okay. Yeah, you know, might not be too happy with NRA, but I don't want to give that victory over to the gun grabbers. Okay. Yeah. So can you speak on what you would like to see happen with the NRA? I can I can definitely do that. Okay. I would like to see it reformed, which not like totally reformed, but like reforms in the NRA. Uh, I think Wayne Lapierre needs to step down. Mm-hmm. I For think sure. Wholesale change in leadership there mm-hmm. they need to not concentrate on entertainment anymore and actually concentrate on 
on Second Amendment issues, mm -hmm. actually lobbying Congress, using their power that they do have to advance the Second Amendment mm -hmm. and stop, you know, trying to promote like celebrities. I have nothing against Dana Lash or any of them, but they were being paid outrageous amounts of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and they weren't really flip flopping anyone or flip flopping anyone. They were mostly. You, know, you mean con like converting, bringing new people in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, they were. It was entertainment for the gun people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, let's bring people in. I think that's where everything needs to concentrate. Uh, they need to concentrate more on outreach as well, mm -hmm. reaching to yeah. the LB LGBT communities, and the black communities, and the Hispanic communities, and the typical non-gun communities. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the reasons why I like what Maj is doing so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and uh, you know the way that it works, every community is going to be different. You have to go in there with a different approach. Um, what do you think is the best way to recruit people, or is there? I don't know if there's just one way. I don't know. I don't think it's a cookie cutter way to recruit people. Mm -hmm. What I would say is take someone who's anti gun or afraid of guns and take them to the range. Mm -hmm. Just talk to them and say, hey, well, before you and can speak against that you really need to try it mm -hmm. take it to the range and let them shoot also use personal stories like one personal story i use is when i was a little baby i was less than one years old uh, my mom was home with me and my four sisters uh there was a home invader broke into our house he had a pretty big knife and my mom pulled a little 38 revolver on him Mm -hmm. and told him, get out of my house. I will shoot you. And the guy said, no, you won't. Mm -hmm. And he took a step forward. And my mom, being my mom, you know, she does what she says. Mm -hmm. So, bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. He falls over, and we all lived. Yep. Now, if my mom didn't have a gun... I might not be here talking to you because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no one breaks into a house. Not for good stuff. Team. Yeah, not for good stuff. Yeah, not for good intents, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we've talked about this too. Mm -hmm. The gun community. You have people that come to the range. They're new, and what are we? We're rude. Mm -hmm. We need to promote. No matter who they are, just talk to them. Everybody has. I I do agree. Everybody has the right to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Everybody, and. Um, you know, if we take the time and we're at range, you see somebody you haven't seen before, talk to them. What's two seconds of talking to them? Hey, how you doing? You ever been to the range before? Or whatever. You don't even have to work at the range. Mm -hmm. You can come over and just be nice and be pleasant. A guy might say, yeah, can I shoot one of your guns? I let people shoot my stuff all the time. Why? Because obviously I'm going to shoot their stuff. But, you know, we make it very social. Social event, you know, and have fun with it. You guys are gun guys, and I'm a gun guy, so you don't get this feeling. But people who've never really shot a lot, or maybe never shot at all, when they go to a range, they're intimidated and they're scared. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, they are. And I think if you can make them feel more comfortable uh, and explain, yes, a gun needs to be respected, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be feared. It should be a healthy respect yeah. for that gun. Yeah, I think anytime you go into like a new culture, a new environment or whatever, you do get a little intimidated. And we have to try, you know, to make that a little bit easier. Do you ever do that, Trey? Do you ever have like noob days at the range? What's that? You have what? Do you noob have, days? Yeah, noob days. Newbies. Oh, oh noob. noob. Sorry, I think you said nude. Oh, I'm nude. Like, nude. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not a good idea. It's a good <laughs> idea, but not a good idea. <laughs> um, no, but we do... We do have uh, like women shooting days, things like that, different stuff. Um, usually, if they're new, they get to meet me, and I go over and talk to them for a little bit and ask them how much shooting they've done. If they've done none, I'll actually go over there and like work with them. Like, okay, here's the three rules: do this, do this. Here's how you handle a gun. You know, here's what's safe. Here's protocol. Mm -hmm. Here's etiquette. You know, there's etiquette on a range, and they don't know what that is. They've never been there before. You know, and uh, just take my time and put a little, you know, talk with them and make them comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that it's worked out. I see them come back. They come back. And everybody else talked to them, too, because obviously the owner's over there talking to them, so they must be pretty nice. You just got to 
set the example. Mm-hmm. If you see someone not practicing proper etiquette on the range, don't assume that they're just being jerks. So they, yeah, because they might not know. Mm-hmm. The only thing I get agitated is directional of the gun. So if the guy's doing something that's inappropriate, I just walk over. Hey, can you not do that, please? And let me show you what to do. Now, obviously, he's pointing at a gun at somebody's head, and then I'm gonna, you know, I might be a little bit more aggressive, of course. But usually, it's stupid stuff like they were loading and they were pointing this way, and they just didn't do it. And I guess, sir, can you please point it down or downrange? Oh, I didn't even think about me pointing it at the firing line. And then you work with them, and uh, you know, you just go from there. But a lot of times what happens is they get yelled at and screamed at and there's an RSO in their face screaming at them because the guy didn't, he had the gun up or he didn't load the mag right or something, some ridiculous thing. Even, even me, when I go to other ranges, the RSOs yell at me and I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, I, I really didn't do anything for you to yell at me. Yeah. But they, you know, I some guess RSOs I don't know get uh, forever, like, or, um, some RSOs get real power hungry. <laughs> Yeah, I know they do. And that's yeah. not how we get more people to the range. Mm-hmm. And if that's their first time being at the range, you done. It's probably going to be the last time. Done. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, you know what would be funny? Let's let that guy shoot that 12 gauge and three and a half inch magnum and it blows his shoulder half off and he never comes back again. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell him, you shoot that gun, it's going to kick. I'm going to tell you that right now. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to shoot it now. Yeah, I mean, you know. You need to make it. You need to make it fun and and, and like a different experience. Mm-hmm. My, I've had people come to and completely anti gunners, come to the range and they said, "I want to protect myself and I want to learn how to do concealed weapons," and they take the class and they shoot, and then they come back and shoot again, but it's an experience. Then they keep coming back and then I see them now they're doing competitive shooting or they shoot every weekend and now they know the how the kind of how the flow goes. I've had that happen several times. Completely anti-gun person changed into a gun person. Yeah. Because they realize, hey, number one, we're not a bunch of assholes. Oops, excuse me, sorry. We're not a bunch of jerks. Mm-hmm. We're B, at the end. We're at the end. You can let it all shoot fly. Shoot fun. <laughs> they enjoy shooting. Uh-huh. And C, they can protect themselves. And they get the, the camaraderie is what's important. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was at the range, and I saw the guy with his girlfriend, and they were talking about, oh, this is the first time you're shooting. This is going to be great. You're going to have a great time. So I went into the range, and he pulls out, like, like you're saying, he pulled out a, uh, a Marshbook 500 with slugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I told her, I, I actually went up to him. I was like, this is the first time shooting. You don't want her to have to shoot the gun. That's going to ruin her on guns forever. Yeah, and he kick didn't out the shoulder. Care. Yeah. So I went up to her. I said, "If you fire that gun, it's going to hurt you." Because she was like probably about a hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I was like, "It's going to hurt you." I was like, "I wouldn't fire that gun." Um, and if you do, just remember, not all guns feel that way. Mm-hmm. And, and she didn't take my advice, and she shot it, and she walked right out. She was crying. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. You just created an anti-gun, or he did create an anti-gun person, mm-hmm. right, right. off. Yeah, let people hey, take their time. Hey, first time flying, hang on, crash a plane. Wouldn't that be kind of funny? I mean, come yeah. on, you're not going to fly again. Yeah. You know? yeah uh, and it's on us as the RSOs to take the time or to, to make people feel comfortable. Yeah. And make them feel safe. Right. Uh, American Gun Chick says, I had to teach some ladies who own guns not to muzzle and sweep people when they are carrying guns because yes. no one ever taught them the actual safety rules. Yes. There is rules and etiquette. Yeah. yeah. And it's not complicated. Everybody knows the rules. Yeah. Firearms always loaded. Point it in a safe direction. Yeah. Finger off the trigger. None of this stuff's complicated. Yeah. But if you've never been taught, how are you going to know? Yeah. You beat it into their head right off the bat, they'll always be the same way. Yeah. Joseph Anthony said start them on a 22 or something. Yeah, absolutely. Work your way up, you know. Work into it. Um, okay. I hate to cut it off right there, but we are over the yep. 9 o'clock right. hour. So I don't want to uh, keep people going. We're going to have to have John come back, man. Yeah, John, I like that. You, I, I'm gonna check that mines thing out. Yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting. We're gonna have yeah, to pick. Questions. Yeah, just send me a message. We gotta pick this nerd brain. Gotta, Sorry. No, it's Somehow cool. I always know it is the nerd brain. <laughs> I don't know why. No, I like it because you're talking about stuff that yeah. I'm not as what's familiar. The, uh, what's the what's the what's the thing from that movie? The brain bug. The brain, the brain bug. bug. We got the brain bug. Starship Troopers. Yeah, Starship Troopers. In the brain. <laughs> so let's do this. Um, before we go, we're about to wrap up here. I'll let everyone um, do their thing. John, tell us how everyone out there can get in touch with you. 
Uh, the easiest way is on Facebook, Real John Crump on Twitter, Crumpy SS. Okay. Or Black Swan Tactical Prep on YouTube. Okay, absolutely. That's... Wait, what was that last one? Black Swan Tactical? Black Swan Tactical Prep. Prep, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and also they can find you on Ammo Land. Ammo Land, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There they go. There you go. Trey, how can the people catch up to you? I don't know if anyone can go swimming in your aquarium, but. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Uh, of course, Aries Farms Training on Instagram and Facebook. Aries Training Facility online. And on Facebook. I heard that. I heard that. I can't correct it. I'm getting my ass tore up on it. <laughs> and then, of course, 352-321-8102 is our phone number. You can email us at Aries Farms or at uh, shoot. Shooting. Shooting at Aries Training Facility dot com because we got new stuff. Yeah. We'll uh, learn you. We'll learn you. I actually have a YouTube channel, but I don't hardly do anything on it. Maybe I should start doing some collaborations with Hank and yeah. and on and Babyface and everything. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys can get in touch with me any way you want. Anything I can help you out. And of course, John, uh, stay on for a little bit. I'd like to talk to you about your machine gun shoot for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, we're wrapping up, getting out of here. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to do it on time. But I think that we've got some uh, internet issues going on, so someone has to come in. So I'm, it might be. I think they said they're coming between five and seven. So. Hopefully they come at five and not seven, but we'll see. You can fly, you can fly me down there and I'll fix it for you. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. It might be worth I it. I need to say one more thing quick, real quick. Sure. What's up? Uh, if, you, if you register on the website, Aries Training Facility, you'll get up updates about the range opening and what's going on. Somebody is asking. Them. Okay. Very cool. And we'll have we'll have Trey come back on. Um, you know, now that they're getting ready to ramp up, we'll have Trey back on here more. Kicking it to the people. Okay, we are out of here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks a lot to John Crump, also Trey from Aries. We appreciate you coming on. Thanks to you guys as well. We'll see you. Peace out. We're out of here. Yeah. See, see ya. ya.